Hello and welcome to Fable Table, an actual play live stream focused on critical world building, collaborative storytelling, and finding the fun in games. <laughs> to my left is Andy doing some weird gestures framing his face and enjoying his beverage of choice. Man. Um, excellent. Um, also joining me today are Brian, John, and Shannon. Hello everyone, how are you doing today? Hey y'all. Oh, you're doing, doing good now. Don't do it, John. Damn it, John. <laughs> I'm Nick, I'm doing great. We don't know. <clears throat> I've had a crazy, crazy week, and I need to unwind by relaxing, doing some tabletop role playing with friends, having some fun, goofing off, excellent, enjoying life. I when too. are your uh, friends showing up? <laughs> That's <laughs> <No>. funny, <laughs> Shannon. How was your week? <laughs> um, it's it was good, but I I'm I don't know. I guess I'm. I'm I'm really soup I'm soup sleepy tie ties and mm -hmm. I'm like ready to be whisked away by someone who just wants to pay all of my bills and like support oh. me in the lavish lifestyle to which I plan on becoming accustomed and to be like no baby you don't have to work no more and I'm gonna be like oh no stop but then I won't work ever again like I'm ready for that so that's how my week went. <laughs> <laughs> I love how Thank much you. you're putting this out into the universe when Thank we, you. you and yeah. I know that your partner is watching the show right now. Yeah, one hundred percent. He's watching me right now. He's like, "Yeah, Aww. when is somebody gonna come along and sweep us both off of our feet hmm. so that we can be?" Yeah, no, he's he's coming along in this scenario. Excellent. Excellent. You're both seeking a sugar daddy. Yeah, we both want a sugar daddy. <laughs> yes. Fantastic. <laughs> Um, <laughs> uh, I definitely heard that. Um, yes, I also had a very, I'm having a week and definitely need some tabletop. We have done minimal prep for today's session, but I have some ideas written down that we will bring to life through, uh, you know, in the moment GM improvisation, which has always, always gotten me by. <laughs> so when has it ever gone wrong? And I have those dice. I have those story dice and I have tarot cards. So if oh, we get into yeah. a pickle, I will pull a tarot card and we'll figure some shit out. Nice. Okay. Well, uh, does anyone have like a quick, quick, like what is going on or what recently happened? They want to go over. Who wants to do the recap, guys? You do the recap this time. I can. You're giving me permission or do you want to do it again? No. Uh, did I do it last time? Someone I think did Andy, did it, Andy, Andy did, did it last time. Andy did it last time, I thought. Did it before I, think, Andy. I think Brian did it last time. I did it before. Okay. okay. Well, then, I don't need somebody else take it. <laughs> John. Keep passing that buck, John. <laughs> Fine. Guys, we had a wonderful trip after getting ambushed into some hills. We, the team, what is our team called? Didn't we come up with a name last time? Yeah. The I don't know. Did we? We did come up with a name. Uh, yeah. What are the? Well, we the were talking about Comfort undead? Eagle and Cake a lot. Oh, oh Comfort, Comfort Eagle. Eagle. Comfort yeah, Eagle. yeah. Eagle. Team Comfort, Comfort Eagle, Eagle uh, ambushed and slayed a bunch of random people that they didn't care about. They did rescue two people they did care about, uh, mm -hmm. and then we went home, and uh, nothing else happened. Yes. That, that is pretty accurate. There, uh, just to give a little more detail, um, no. there is a cult of humans called the Veilers who are interested in ridding the Ravenlands of humans. They think that they are a scourge. Um, Even though they themselves are humans. That's correct. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and they were, they had uh, captured a, a, a stone singer, a dwarf who could move and shape earth, uh, who had plugged up uh, dammed up a river, which which caused the hollows to dry up for a little bit, but you all took care of that and and rescued uh, Hogue, Mary Stone, and his wife Dola, um, who are now um, settling in. Um, I have where is my where is my notes here? Okay, so uh, yeah, Hogue um, has has started work in the gold mine to the north of of the hollows. Uh, maybe I'll switch over to the the map. So the middle screen here, um, so we can see what's going on. So yeah, Hogue is up here uh, working in the abandoned mine. Um, he and his wife have been um, acclimating 
Uh, oh, it didn't switch to roll 20 on this screen. There we go. I say we're still in the hollows yet. Um, he uh, and and his wife are settling in. Hogue is working in the gold mine and, and takes uh, several grave wardens with him for protection and assistance in his work. Um, it's a little slow going because they are not miners. Um, but they do have shovels, so I guess that would help. Um, but he is starting to bring back a little bit of gold. Um, Dola has become kind of a town favorite, particularly at the Moss Family Kitchen, where she has kind of become the uh, a barmaid of sorts. Uh, she and Hogue, you know, he, he being a stone singer is a very gifted singer, but some would say that she's an even better one. Um, and she's been heard by many singing songs. Uh, she brings pints and food to people at the kitchen. Um, from the kitchen, working with Cedric, um, she, it, her her tunes can be heard even from from back there. Um, speaking of, um, Cedric has been giving you lots of grief over the years, Merrick. Um, he is just a really disorganized dude, and does not run a tight ship. Um, what has that relationship been like? Hmm. <clears throat> I think it's more the like. Cedric is, he tries, he makes an effort, but he's not focused. And so therefore he just kind of, he'll do something and then he'll wander off and then he'll try to make an improvement and then he'll just kind of like peter out on it. Mm -hmm. And I think Merrick just kind of like gently edges him along as we go, but he knows that <clears throat> his heart's not into it. So, but it's a job. Yeah. Sometimes Fair. it's a job to have a job. Yeah, so Dola being kind of a, an older woman, like she knows what she wants from a personal and, and, and in a professional life, and she's been lighting a fire under his ass. She's like, I am not going to come in this kitchen and work in such terrible conditions. Shape up or get out. Uh, and so he, is, he has been making some improvements. I don't know if that uh, makes you feel proud or relieved or maybe a little jealous, but she's... Uh, She's been demanding some respect and organization in the kitchen. Um, there's, I think, also been a, a notable tone difference in the Moss family kitchen, whereas, you know, it is a crime den. Like, we know that the, the Moss family... Oh, yeah. I mean, they're not criminals, but there's there's a, you know, Godfather-esque vibe with Rick and the other leaders of the family. Um, it's their kitchen. It's menacing. Um and but she brings a uh, you know warmth and light into the into the building <laughs> that seems a little uh, out of place, but she doesn't care. Um, so yeah, we are going to. Um, I, I really quickly did anyone level up, and and do we need to go over any new moves? Yes, yes. John. Um, no, go ahead, John. I leveled. What what did you take? I put a point into charisma and gain new spells and have one or more armor now. Okay, you took a move that gave you armor. Excellent. Yeah. Shannon, you were supposed to take a new move because you had accidentally <laughs> picked a, a high level move. What did My you end up going head. with? I I chose shoot first, which is a really cool move. It says you're never caught by surprise. When an enemy would get the drop on on you, you get to act first instead. Nice. So. Yeah. Okay, so when Andy is not scouting on um, his uh, um, keep watch uh, for undertake a perilous journey, even if he's not getting his like perfect rolls, uh, at least you aren't going to be surprised. Um, excellent. Um, oh, and I my alignment has changed. Ooh, yeah. Let's talk about your alignment. What is that now? So previously. Uh, cacophony was evil, which I mean, evil and good are just not, I wouldn't call them like exactly similar to the same constructs that we view them as, but mm -hmm. for her as a thief, evil meant that she could shift blame from herself from one person to another. But in her old life, that would have worked really well for her because she was constantly alone. Mm -hmm. Um, so she was just like, cool. Yeah, it was that guy. Um, and for a time, it was uh, Wick because she hated him. But uh, what can you do? But no, yeah, no, I know. But it doesn't fit anymore because 
just, you know, she spent too much time with these people and she's starting to care about them. So now her, uh, her alignment is chaotic, which in this case, uh, is leap into danger without a plan, which I feel like is really, <laughs> that's pretty spot on for some shit that she's been up to anyway. So I feel like, I feel like that was a good choice. I agree. Excellent. Uh, yeah, she seems willing to, to engage in danger whether it's for others benefit or just because it's there um so i think that's totally appropriate (laughs) okay um andy brian did either of you level up i did not but you did andy you said yes i did level up um picked up uh viper strike Ooh is i'll add it to the chat oh my gosh character sheet is going crazy weapons unclick all right there we go uh when you strike an enemy with two weapons at once add an extra 1d4 damage for your offhand strike okay okay so you are you both Hmm. you still have your bow but now you have uh what are your melee weapons two short swords okay did not end up keeping one of the cursed cult swords because I was scared of them. Uh, did anyone keep one of those ritual daggers? Or I took nope. the evil necromancer's sword or whatever that guy was. Yeah. The archveiler's sword. Yeah. Okay. Nope, we did not take a dagger. Okay. Good to know. But I know that it's probably like just housed in evil magic, so I think I'm going to need somebody to like Check it out. So we're back in um, the hollows. Is yeah. there anyone in the hollows who can like, like, check out my sword and be like, mm, "It's gonna kill you while you're sleeping," or <laughs> I don't know, just divine what sort of horrible energy I may have brought back with me? Yeah, there is probably someone. Um... Let's, we haven't seen any um, lizard folk, have we, on screen? We have not. Okay. They live in a swamp. Well, they have lived in the hollows, because, you know, during the blood mist, they've not been able to live in the swamp. (laughs) Um, Okay, there is a lizard folk um, who is regarded by their people to have some shamanistic characteristics. Um, They were born with an innate ability to sense magic, um, which is revered in their culture. And um, they have spent a lot of time trying to fine tune their abilities, but um, being innately born with magic is not very common, even even among the other kin of the Ravenlands. Um, you know, some have natural magic characteristics like elves with their rubies, uh, selkies with their ability to transform, but otherwise being gifted with, you know, various magical gifts is, is not super common. Um, things like stone singing as well. Um, so they don't really have much in the way of a teacher or guide so they're very limited in their capabilities but they are you know one of a few people in the in the hollows that um possess magic including all of you you are among a handful um so i need a name for them do i have a list of names somewhere i thought i did um let's call them keel Uh, Keel. I gotta think of a good last name. I think for lizard folk, they shouldn't have a last name. Okay. All right. Just a singular singular name oh, that yeah. defines who they are. Same here, brother. Sounds good. So Keel, spelled K E E L. They use he/him pronouns. Um. Well, let me let me do a little bit more um, kind of scaffolding for our our session today um, because talking to Keel might be one of your downtime actions. So, um, 
We are going to actually spend about a month of downtime. I'm curious, oh, wow. uh, does well, anyone still have any of their preparation from last time? Uh, no, I don't. My preparation was on spout lore. Mm -hmm. I can't remember if I had a chance to use it or not. I honestly don't. I think you did, but you rolled bad. I think so. Yeah, that, that sounds I'll, familiar. I'll, I'll, sc I'll scroll up in the chat and find it. I think you used it when trying to um, look up the symbol of the god of yeah. the Veilers. Yep, oh, yep, I found it. I didn't roll terrible, but I didn't roll amazing. Okay. All right. So um, with a month, you all um, have some more downtime. Um, I'm going to allow each of you to do some sort of preparation. Um, so to link that ability again, we have it in the, the special moves. Um, it is bolster. Uh, when you spend your leisure time in study, meditation, or hard practice, you gain preparation. If you prepare for a week or two, what gain one preparation. If you prepare for a month or longer, gain three. When your prep pays off, spend one of your prep uh, to gain plus one to any role related to that. Uh, you can only spend one prep per role. So uh, we have about a month of downtime, and I'm going to give each of you the option to either spend that whole month doing prep or spending half of it doing prep and gaining one hold uh, or one preparation and then doing some other downtime activity. That one. Um, so let me let me let me talk about what happens during this month to kind of give you some options. Um, you can do stuff related to your character and projects and, and things you think they might just in general be interested in doing, having you know an, an effect on the world. Um, but there's some other stuff going on in the hollows as well. Um, if you're interested in um, paying attention to things going on, so uh, let me turn down my music just a little bit. Um, so, uh, throughout the next month, um, oh, actually, there was one thing I wanted to do before all this, but we'll, we'll, we'll deal with that here in a minute. Um, so there's a couple acti- just gossip going around about a couple things. So, um, around the first week back, um, someone's child goes missing, um, they just, you know, are gone for a day and then two and then three. People are start to really worry. Uh, the the city guard um, didn't see anything happening. Uh, and then about a week after, uh, another child goes missing. And then another. Um, and it's starting to become very concerning. Um, so so there, that is something that's going on. Uh, there is also to the south, we haven't looked at this in a long time, but during our game of the quiet year, uh, we developed this this little tower called Widow's Peak that the Grave Wardens went to uh, at, at one point and returned and said, there's some fucked up shit to the south. Nobody go look at that. And no one has for the entirety of the Blood Mist. Um, so, um, so that Widow's Peak has been there, an abandoned tower. Uh, there is now suddenly a, a, a second tower sitting right next to the, the dilapidated tower. It has suddenly appeared um, out of out of nowhere, and no one knows what that is. Um, it's some area other area X. <laughs> Maybe uh, you're referring to annihilation. Yes. Excellent. Um, Yes, uh, some other things going on. The Grave Wardens and City Watch are in general still very, very busy. Everyone is is kind of working really actively. There's lots of patrols keeping an eye on the Rust Brothers who also seem to be very active in the area. That has not changed. Um, there's lots of pa Rust Brother patrols. There's lots of demons about that seem to be under their control uh, as well as undead um, just groups of undead kind of patrolling around. Um, and it's bad news for a lot of people who are traveling. Um, and in fact, there is um, one wagon that appears a couple days after you return. Um, and it is none other than Trega and Robert, the couple who got, got I knew married. you were going to say that. I was like, we, we have not seen the last of these folks. 
So, um, it's a good thing they got their shit back, right? They, I agree. they did get their shit back. That got airdropped to them by Cacophony. Some um, benevolent, beautiful Selkie person again, in the yeah, dead oh of God. night. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, so <laughs> they show up. Um, Merrick, you're probably the first to notice, uh, unless someone is like, you know, keeping an eye on the comings and goings through the, the Western gate of, of the town. Um, but they show up, they head over to the Moss family kitchen to, uh, you know, seek lodgings and food. Um, so Merrick, you're probably working in the kitchen when you see them walk in. I'm probably um, like, sneak a peek out, like, shit. And then kind of duck back in a little bit, mm -hmm. <laughs> kind of wondering how to deal with it. Maybe I'll let Dola deal with it first and see, maybe like listen in from behind in the kitchen and see what I hear. Yeah. So, uh, you know, she's like, hello, honeys. What can I do for you? Would you like a pint? We got this on the menu today. We got a, our wonderful chef in who, you know, who can make basically anything you want so long as we've got the ingredients. But here's our specials. Um, and they place an order and then, you know, Dola does her thing of chatting people up and they start to say, you know, like, oh, well, we just got married and we just had a, a long and difficult journey. We had actually a really crazy wedding. Um, f some fights broke out and these people showed up and stole a bunch of our wedding gifts, but then dropped them back off. Um, and then they begin to describe <laughs> what those thieves and brawlers yeah. look like. I and... think Merrick will just kind of all right, buck up some courage and then he will grab the plates and take them out to the table. Set them up and be like, well, welcome to the Hollows. I'm glad to see you arrived safely. I'm sorry about your wedding. Oh, it's you. Um, well, uh, so you work here then. Yes. Hmm. Now, I don't really... Sorry, I'm looking for my uh, my tavern music, and I cannot seem to find it. I have too many audio tracks. Let's just yeah, do... Maybe. Let's just do this one. Hmm. Okay. Um, you were uh, involved in trying to break up the brawl, and... My brother, says Robert, says that you were one of the people who tied him up. Mm, that's not necessarily true. I was the one who saved him. Mm -hmm. Saved him? What do you mean? Well, he was <clears throat> lying by the side of the road. He tried to attack my friend. And then he was in dire straits. And afterwards, I, I brought him back. Your friend who tackled him and carried him away past the well, willow tree. About, he was about <laughs> to start a fight. Worm tells me these things. Trust me, it was better that he was taken away from that moment. The god of knowledge grants boons to those who seek them. And I had blessed your wedding. He knew something was going to be terrible. It was going to be worse if it continued. This was the best course of action for all. You are lying through your teeth. Am I? We never discussed a worm giving you information about this wedding. Oh, no. He's the god of knowledge, though. Mm. I blessed the wedding. If I blessed the wedding and this was supposed to happen, it would have happened. That's that's how I see it. Uh, All right, Shadow. I want to, like, hold you to this. I'm going to need <laughs> a... You think they're so blindly devout that you will never make any logical decision again. I think I'm oh, going mean, to need a defy danger well, I'm charisma. Trying, to... I'm just trying to sell the argument. I'm absolutely lying through my teeth. but Yeah, um, defy danger I charisma. Did. Got it. Oh, shit. Maybe he will level. Mark yep. XP, Brian. Got him. Oh, nice. Well, these people will not follow worm, that's for sure. Uh, so... They speak no more of this to you. They say, they they kind of dismiss you and, and say like, oh, well, we'll have, thanks for the food. Um, and they're going to go ahead and, and report 
to the local constabulary, i.e., the Moss family. Um, they're gonna go. They're gonna go to the the city watch and basically report their their version of events to you all. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm going to need someone to make a special move, uh, which is called uh, Outstanding Warrants, and it's on the special moves sheet. Uh, it reads, and I'm just going to roll it uh, myself. Mm -hmm. um, when you return to a civilized place in which you've caused trouble before, roll plus charisma. On a hit, word has spread of your deeds and everyone recognizes you. On a seven to nine, that and the GM chooses a complication. Um, so I, I need you to roll, so I need someone to roll outstanding warrants, i.e. another charisma roll to see how the Moss family takes this news. Does anybody have less than zero for charisma or like more than zero for charisma? Okay. So what are John you does. asking exactly? Is John the guy who is dumping charisma or, yeah, putting points into charisma, uh, what do you want? I want a charisma roll for okay. outstanding warrants. And I Why think it's appropriate that you roll that? this, John, because you're kind of the one that instigated the whole thing. You know, they're like, hey! <laughs> okay. Um, uh, so, I think what happens is uh, they speak with uh, the Grave Wardens. Um, it gets back to Rick Moss. Uh, and Rick meets with them and basically asks, you know, what can I do to make this right? Um, and and kind of takes the heat on your behalf, all of you. Um, and they settle up with with uh, Trega and Robert. Um, nice. And it gets left alone. <laughs> Look at that. There you go sure that won't come back to bite us in the ass at all no um yeah they they have wares to sell um they will not sell to any of you though that's fine Aww. Okay. Rude. We, we all know what's going to happen if we really want what they have <laughs> i will definitely feel it yeah no 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 sweat my guys they never suspect us a second time right who would be dumb crime. enough to return to the scene of the crime a second time? <laughs> yeah, double jeopardy, right? Mm -hmm. We're innocent. <laughs> no, <let's go> <laughs> okay. Okay. So, um, y'all have have some downtime actions. I'm going to drag onto the map. If it'll load properly. I'm trying to put a second tower down here by Widow's Peak. Um, and then children are oh, going missing. You know that that you have carnal floating in the abyss right I do. Now. Yeah, I've I've started adding NPC some NPCs to the map like Dola here and Hoag and then I know gotcha. I also put Carnal all the way over here cuz that's in the direction of Galler Hall. Um mm -hmm. I need to talk to John about if it's even possible to expand this map and add stuff to it Yeah, I know he it made is. it. It's a pain, but I can do something like it. Or I can I can just get it from you and yeah. do it myself. Uh, yeah. We'll figure it out. Okay. Oh, I see. The one tower token I wanted is that is from that source that doesn't work on roll 20. Oof. Okay, I'll find another Let's tower. use the theater of our minds. It's yeah. open. I'll just put this one. Okay. Agreed, valid opinion. They are unreasonable. That is a valid opinion. So downtime. Yes. What do you guys want to do? Yes. Yeah. So, how do you all want to spend the next month? What do you do? Uh, I drop my Tums bottle lid. Oh wow! Take oh, take great right preparation for Tums. Yeah. <laughs> um. um I think... No. Go ahead. Uh, I since I'm picking up Viper Strike and learning a weapon that I didn't use in the mountains since I used to have a spear until it broke. Um, I think I need to study the short sword a little bit. Um, maybe I approach one of the members of the Moss family, uh, the, the, the crime side, and see if there's a swordsman who can give me some lessons. I keep describing them like they're a crime syndicate, but they're the ones uh, that's like keeping the peace around here. Like, they're well, shopping knights. 
potato 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 um yeah but potato pa mafia so if um it, but somewhere in this mafia is some wizened old sword master who mm -hmm. uh who can train with whom i can apprentice for a couple weeks right to get some some pointers yeah yeah there are i mean there's lots of them uh john can probably speak a bit more to like the rite of passage that um moss family members go through to become grave wardens but there is i don't Man, even know how you pronounce only it you someone in the moss family who had a keen sense of swords and was like known as the fighter or something basil if only you had a friend like that I know I have that friend. I just I don't know what you're doing during your prep period, so I don't want to assume well, that you let's, can devote. Time why don't we to this. find out together? Come on over, why, buddy. Yes. Why don't you make a bond together? Let's Ooh, make a bond. Let's make a bond. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Let me set the scene then for you, Basil and Chives. Yeah. You come across these dem hills, as they're known, where gold occasionally can be found panned in a little stream or in a bunch of different streams and creeks and cricks even uh as you crest one of these hills you will spot down to well, just completely shirtless panning for gold your boy the swordsman himself wick moss he has two shovels in his hand each one with holes put into them to act as like double you know uh Panning? Pan what, what's the thing called? The filters? Sieve. The sieve, yes. You would know. You on the West Coast, where that gold rush happened that one time. Yeah, that's... When you move to Washington, you we have to... There. To get to get your Washington Mandatory. driver's license, you have to pan for gold at least several... You have to get 40 hours of panning time. Wow. You have to wade into a river with your pant legs rolled up, yeah. and then... Yeah. Chew on a, chew on a, a piece you know of it. straw. It's yeah. a prerequisite it's beautiful, to live here that you've played luscious, Oregon Trail obviously. and Yukon Trail. Translucent, I, indestructible I hair. Well, by by <laughs> definition, up. by definition, being on this side of the Cascade Mountains, we beat Oregon Trail. So you know, just saying. <laughs> we won! Yeah. We totally cut off John. <laughs> it's okay. John's having his one man uh Dahmer party, uh, <laughs> just on his own. Oh uh, Jesus. <laughs> Donner with an N. <laughs> Donner, Domner. It's no, two different, no, different well, very uh, different experiences. Uh, uh, anyway, I'm changing it. You from find Den Wick Moss, Domner. Basil. Oof. What do you do, Basil? Uh, I'm I marvel at this uh, display of of uh, manly gold prowess and uh, <laughs> uh, you know uh, this withered <laughs> elf husk. <laughs> I, I just like have like I'm just starry eyed for a moment, like watching you uh, move these shovels around with a, a dexterity oh, yeah. and and just go teach me, um and uh, okay. and and uh, jives kind of like lingers near the edge of the river, just looking like what the fuck are you doing? Um, I would and, like uh, Andy and John. I would like each of you to describe uh what the what the camera sees during this rocky training montage of basil training and <laughs> into to does, does, roll, does roll 20 have montage music uh i'm sure it does but i i don't have it available which mountain what is it you want to learn uh, i need to viper strike with all the venom i can muster I need to be able to rend as much chaos with the swords as I do with the bow. I see. Well, like a bow that uses two hands, you must use two hands yourselves in melee combat, then. I throw him a shovel head. And like uh, the guy, the old man from Karate Kid, whatever. I was going to say, Mr. Miyagi. Mr. Miyagi shit going. Yes, we pan for gold. Uh, but also learn the power of thrusting into soil, which will translate into thrusting into an enemy's body with a sharp but also short length object. Uh, and hopefully he helps me pan for more gold and X so I can make more jewelry. I, I was wow. going to say, I think I think part of this is you're also just getting free gold labor out of me while, while that's we're exactly doing this what thing. I want. Yes, <laughs> I want to make jewelry. I have a my own Miyagi to impress. 
You do, don't you? Excellent. Always. All right. Uh, All right. I'm, I'm, cha I'm changing our bond to uh, to reflect uh, it, being in awe of your uh, prowess with the sword. I endeavor to to learn of your sword techniques. Oh yeah. Oh uh, yes. Which mountain would have been good music for Basil this? Basil is useful labor. Okay. Vibes <laughs> is a demon. Basil is useful. Labor. <laughs> uh also okay also part of this is um of this montage nick is when um w wick is done with me for the day and he's bringing gold back into town uh chives picks up like a lump of straw that he holds under the skull and one of his horns is like a dummy and like dances it around for for target practice you know so there's there's training with chives as well nice oh i could have shown you the elf What Aren't elf? you like half elf now? I am half elf. I'm like the only guy who knows the only elf in town. You want to go meet an elf? He also doesn't even live in town. Yeah, I don't. We live in Dem Hills with you. Bro, let's let's meet a fucking elf. Let's go talk to. Is it, is, this is the this is the the graduation of my oh. training, right? You're gonna be like what? Papa. He said to Papa. Oh fuck! What's the elf? <laughs> I already forgot. Uh, Lucerin. Lou Saren, thank you, Mr. Note Taker. John's had a week, okay? All good. Uh, oh my god. Apollo underscore Nick, we go to Lou Saren's house. Excellent. With, you know, bags of little gold or whatever. Uh, so that I can begin working and Basil can make a friend. All right. Um, You head up to his, he's got like a little hut up here in in dem hills um it has you know a, basically a tiny little forge just just big enough to do like a little bit of gold melting here and there and a little like a little casting or pouring you know whatever yeah whatever he fancies um and um I'm trying to get my roll 20 to music but none of the tracks are loading good old roll 20. a sarah brimble yeah. lifestyle why is there so many tracks in this playlist? Okay, I think I need to refresh. Um, and uh, unlike, you know, his usual surprises you from behind when you show up, um, he is, he has the Elven Rubies sitting on his desk in front of him. Um, Hi, Lucerin. And he is holding uh, in his palms the large, the elder ruby. Um, he has some notes, some of his notebooks open that he sketches in with his, his designs. Um, and he does not uh, really react to your uh, approach, unlike he normally does. So he is normally very um, full of hospitality and, and greeting. Um, but here he, uh, is just holding the ruby and goes, oh, oh, hello, welcome, Wick, what, uh, to what do I owe the pleasure? I brought a half-elf. Ah, excellent. Uh, please, come, come in, friend. Yeah, uh, the demon. I'm gonna use the forge. Uh, I go to use the forge. <laughs> uh, well, Greetings, sir. I, I only recently learned of my elfin parentage and, uh, or my elfin, yeah, uh, uh, you know, genes. So this is all, this is all new for me. I, I was raised as an orphaned man in a fawn community. I, I, I know, I know very little of my background. Well, much like your forefathers, you seem to have fit in well with nature. Half elves tend to lean one way or the other. They focus a lot on their mortality and uh, align their ambitions and goals and values with humans. Uh, and others um, cling to the elven ways of, of nature and patience, nurturing. Uh, it seems you've found a bit of a balance here. And he'll like lean down and pet chives, um, and turn and find some sort of like vegetable to feed him. I am Lucerin, 
uh, a mentor to Wick. He and you are one of his friends that he's been traveling with lately, I take it? <laughs> Just in the back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, we have we have traveled together, uh, and and we have uh, spilt blood together on the battlefield, mm. and and he called me a mass murderer recently. But he has also been uh, training me uh, in the art of the short sword, and uh, and I also think training me in the art of the exploited gold mining labor. He he pauses at that second piece and l like kind of, you know, micro-expression, looks over at Wick and all of the gold that he has helped in Lucerne collect <laughs> over the years. Um, and he says, uh, well, you are a good friend. Um, and he will um, say, is there anything I can offer you? Um, it, I hear that you are one of his traveling companions who recovered these rubies, uh, for which I am eternally grateful. If there is anything I can do to repay your your sacrifice and and this gift, please do not hesitate to ask. Uh, I I think we'll hold this this uh favor for a future time. I just to know that there is other elves in this community is is reward enough for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That I'm not alone. Yeah. Yeah, he'll. Um, Wait, does, is Lucerne? Do I regard Lucerne as like a source of a tremendous amount of knowledge? Can I start a uh, uh, a um, discover your parentage side quest with him? Yeah, that's that is actually something I think would be fine. Um, this would count as one of your downtime actions. So your training would, uh, your preparation would provide you one hold rather than the three, if that's okay with you. Yeah. Okay. Um, and, then, and then I and then I ask, yeah, Lucerin, like I've I've never known who I am or where I come from. Just just have known the mountains and the and the uh, the fawn people around me. So I, I I wish to know more about about who who I was before that. Yeah. As the blood as as the blood mist took my people, like who were they? Yeah, good question. Give me let's do a spout lore check for this downtime action. Spouty spout. Lore. And even if you fail or get a partial success, we can always come back to it and we will kinda like reveal I wish pieces. To assist him. Oh way. come on, let me assist him, Nick. <laughs> uh how would you assist in this? Wick. Well, Wick, you know, he's a human, but also this fey monstrosity. I think he would have asked, like, well, you know, how close to an elf am I? Uh, to Lucerne. It must have come up in conversation. So maybe as, like, part of it, I, like, show, oh, you know, I remembered what you told me, Lucerne. Let me help. Okay. Uh, okay. All right. Roll I'm the teacher's pet. Roll eight or interfere. Uh, That's fine. Is that bond? No. What yes, uh, you you roll plus bond. Okay. Okay. I don't know how to implicate. I don't even you. want to mark XP for that. That one feels uh, like bullshit. <laughs> um. Uh, mm. You know what? Um. If you want to take it, take it. Um, I can pocket that failed roll and use it later. No, I'll take XP so you don't have to do that. <laughs> no, I mean, if you mark XP, I'm going to take take that failed roll and, and punish you with consequences later. All That's right, I won't take it. <laughs> okay. I thought you were what, that roll so didn't happen. <laughs> it didn't happen. All right. Um, so Wick uh, keeps interrupting Lucerin, uh as he <laughs> as you try and explore your heritage with him. You know, asking questions and um, talking about like what you remember from your childhood, what your uh, your Fawn family, I, I'll call them, has has told you about where you come from. Um, if anything, um, to try and, you know, see if he knows anyone who might have been your parents. Uh, and, and, uh, and Wick just keeps going, like, bringing stuff up that is not super relevant. 
and it's a little distracting. The um, elves came from the south, right? <laughs> <laughs> Long ago when the world was young, uh, they were um, old. So he does tell you that, uh, you know, long ago there was a, a great red comet that flew past the Ravenlands uh, called the Red Runner, who, uh, which a, a shard of this comet broke off and landed in the Ravenlands. And after many, many years, the shards that had fallen upon the earth began to sprout, ooh, excuse me, sprout the elven Whoa. people, uh, grown from the ground. Um, uh, and ever forth, they reproduce um, as large, sh large and mature enough shards. When they break, eventually those shards can become elves themselves. Uh, their their procreation is is not in the natural uh, sense that most other kin uh, experience, um, but they are capable of reproducing with other kin, particularly with humans. Um, so that is where half elves come from. Um, unfortunately, there were many, many elven lives lost during the Elder Wars, and many others uh, either retreated back to their their kind of ancestral home of Dankwood to the far north, John, <laughs> not the south. Um, uh, whatever. Uh, it's all good. Um, and others perished during the blood mist. Um, though he, the, Lucerin seems to have not reconnected with um, with elves, other elves in a very long time. Um, but he is at a loss as to who your parents might be. Um, you but, knew, yeah. he, and, and and you knew no no couples who were expecting who were in this area. Or headed towards the mountains uh, all those years ago. Well, your heritage would suggest that an elf an elf came around these parts during the blood mist and met your parent, what your human parent. Uh, and I know of no elves who came to this area, so perhaps you come from somewhere else. I will think back uh these a couple decades back and see if if anything comes to mind and let you know Lucerne, um, can during... half elves reproduce why of course what do they their offspring become uh um, human it will depend on the other partner i suppose so I can't say I've ever met uh, the child of a half elf. Bro, did you just assume my fractional elfhood? Yeah. <laughs> Pardon me. I uh, I am ignorant in <laughs> your culture. I thought I was so... the one teaching you. <laughs> Can I ask kind of like sure. maybe a, a silly question though? Like, how old is Basil? Is does his half elf blood like make him age slower than like a normal human would? Like maybe he's much older. I don't know. I, I guess maybe that's just... you know? yeah. I'm just curious. <laughs> like maybe 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 his parents were around like from from way way before, and it's like and he's not looking back far enough. I don't know. Not sure, but I ended up with my uh, Ibex buddy here because we are heterozygotes. <laughs> oh, God. Sorry, did you mention oh! how old Basil is? <laughs> <laughs> I was too busy making a really bad science point. I was like, um, <laughs> wow, he's the uh, way to pull that one out. I'm just yeah, curious. Again, um, I'm sorry. To, I didn't mean to derail, but I'm like, maybe he's just like much older. I, he's, so. I think he's uncertain about his age as well because the faith people, the fawn people didn't, you know, they just told him they found him in the mountains. He didn't really know anything else about his himself, and mm. um, he was still living with them during the blood mist. Ah, yes, I read about this convenient how, amnesia. How, how many? How <laughs> many? Uh, no, it's like full on Anastasia arc going on right here. Um, 
how many uh how many years after the blood mist are we at right now uh at Four. this point like two or three months mm -hmm. oh okay we're it's that recent okay so um yeah I think by the I, end of this downtime, it'll I, be like four. I think, I, I think what we know is, I, I believe to Basil's mind, he's just a young adult. So like mm. by human standards, let's say in his late 20s. Oh, I need to look up how long, how long do Ibexes live? <laughs> About 17 Fucking... years. Okay. I was no. curious. It's not a normal Ibex. I would was it, wondering if. Would it if... not be Ibises? Okay, plural of ibex. Um, um, yeah, I was He's wondering old goat. if we, if if I like a little baby, a little baby chives was the one who like carried you on his back into the fawn community. I but, mean, he could. He, he's a magical ibex, so he he could have. You know, there is a move for that that you can take later. So I'm gonna say for now, no, he is not. He's a completely mortal and regular Ibex goddess. Supernatural? Absolutely. What he does on roofs? Unbelievable. But magical? <laughs> not not quite. Okay. We don't know. Um yeah. So so I think with this failed role, you'll have to explore your heritage somewhere else unless Unless I can craft a way for Lucerne to have figured out where you came from, but he has no gotcha. recollection of it right now. Uh, I will also add during these lessons, during this conversation, while Wick is like distracting, adding strange input into the conversation, I keep looking over at the rubies, wanting to like reach out and find out if I have some sort of affinity for them. Um, I don't know what Lucerne's reaction to that is, but I assume he's like, you're not ready for that. Um. Yeah. I think he'll let you hold them. Oh, okay. Um, and he'll tell you um, when elves' bodies perish, like if I were to be mortally wounded by you with, say, your short sword and your new proficiency, this body would shrivel and dry up and cast away like a like a snake's skin, and it would disappear. But my ruby would be left behind and I would be left behind in a way alive in a different body, just, just in the ruby. Um, in Horcrux form. Yes, indeed. And elves in this form can speak with one another and maintain relationships and entertain one another for many, many indefinitely really. Uh, and there is a place far to the north, north beyond the Dankwood, at the edge of the Ravenlands, where rubies can be revived and elves can grow their bodies again. But without it, that we are stuck in ruby form. Many of us live such long lives that my peers can become apathetic to life and grow tired of it and either cast away their body or fuse their ruby to a tree and become an ent to tend to nature. But you won't have to worry about such things. You get to die like all of us. Yay. I could be an ent. No, you can't. Fascinating. Thank you, Lucerne, for your your wise input. It's the year 70. You can be whatever you want. <laughs> All right. What do American Cacophony do during their downtime? Yeah. Well, and also you, John. You also get downtime actions, but... I'll go last. Okay. I've hogged enough spotlight. Well, Shannon, do you want to go... Yeah, I was so I cuz so Cacophony got that sword and she also doesn't know how to use it. So she was going to look for she was going Andy had the same we had the same idea and original idea right here. <laughs> well, so I, I but I I hadn't thought of going to Wick because he hates me so hard. Um so, but what I, what I think Cacophony does is like, while, while he's teaching you 
to use a shovel and thus like a short sword she's like off in the woods like behind you guys like watching him <laughs> give you lessons stalking and us. she's <laughs> yeah I'm Creep. like cacophony is like stalking the two of you and like while you're doing lessons she's like shadowing the lesson in the woods on her own um because she wants to learn how to use this freaking sword um but i also think um i think she wants to go find out what's going on with the kids i think she's like all right what the hell's going on I just want to say, randomly, while you are doing this, like, shadow training, Chives just, like, wanders up to you, like, he's not phased at all that you're, like, lingering in the bushes nearby, and just, like, says hi, and then comes back. <laughs> and Cacophony, like, tell on me. ninjutsus and, like, smoke bomb, and there's a log there instead. Yep. A cloud of feathers. <laughs> <laughs> Squee! And then she just, like, flashes out of there. Yep. No. I think, I think, I think she's just gonna look at Chives and be like, be cool, man. And then like <laughs> and then keep doing her shadow stabbing into the earth. Mm. Um but I yeah, so I think I think that's how she spends a good chunk of her day just watching. And when she gets bored, she's like, Alright, I got that down. And then wanders away. And um I think she's gonna start maybe asking around about the kids. Like she's gonna go to some of the folks about town whose children have gone missing and be like, where's your egg rat? When was the last time you saw them? What were they wearing? <laughs> Good questions. Okay. <laughs> Give me some sort of check. Uh, hang on. Let me look at discern realities really quick and see if this would be appropriate. Yeah. I, was, I, didn't know. I just threw it into the chat. Discern realities, I think, would be perfect here. Okay. Um, as a wisdom? Uh, yeah, it's always as or wisdom. Intelligence. Unless, always unless wisdom. it's... At least, I think it is. Didn't we determine that sometimes the sheet is wrong? Let me look up discern realities really quick. Discern reality is wisdom because spout lore is intelligence. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, it. and there's some moves, like, that let you use it with int instead of wisdom. Right. And, oh... Who is, is this wizard? Yeah, wizards have a move that let you use intelligence instead of wisdom. And if you get a 12 plus, you get to ask the GM any three questions, not limited by the list. Like you can just ask oh the my GM God. anything. Damn. Yeah, wizards are, are sick. Wizards okay. rule. Okay. <laughs> All right, uh, I'm going to do, uh, I'll do my discern real. I'm not, I'm not super confident about this. Okay. Nick, as... Ooh, <laughs> I'm going to take my XP. I was going to say, as she gathers information, Merrick will eventually be trying to learn about the children as well as part of his downtime. But I don't know if she gets any information at all, so we'll see. Um... People don't like me. People move away from me when they see me coming. So now I don't. I don't are you don't. are you both investigating together, or are you kind of doing things separately? I think whenever Sh Shannon's done, I'm going to commune with Worm, and I have a bunch of questions, and then I would okay. spend the rest of my time once I learn that their children are missing, like multiple. I will go investigate as well. Okay. So maybe I imagine it uh, being yeah. like a separate. Yeah, I think yeah, we're both investigating separately, and then like, and then yeah. I'm like, "What are you doing here?" And he's, like, you know, so yeah. Well, it sounds like you're taking complete two different approaches. One Probably. just asking a god, and the other actually talking to people. Um, My god well, is not. I won't he's ask not for him about the children. Home right I'll now. ask for him about different stuff, but still. Oh, cool. okay. I'm sorry, I misunderstood. Um, yeah. So on a four, I'm. There's not a lot here. The parents are just like, yeah, my our child left in the middle of the night um they had not been acting strangely don't know if they like like they were all in their nightgowns had gone to bed we had like tucked some of them were like we had tucked them in and they were just gone there's no sign that like any like no break no force of entry no kidnapping they just seem to have disappeared and and you even question the city watch um and they say like we've we we haven't seen anything um 
and like we weren't paying attention for tracks or anything so mm. there's there's just no information here um at least no one you've talked to and that's not to say someone else also couldn't use their downtime action to question people and maybe catch someone who saw or heard something um yeah give me one moment while i replace my headset battery i think i think for cacophony it's like she's just noticing that there are less and less like little kids like goofing around like usually like they run in front of her and they get in her way and she's like <sighs> but then she's noticing <laughs> right like get the hell out of here kid but i think that she's <laughs> noticing like that there are less and less children and she's like what in the absolute hey hey is happening in yeah. this town yes so okay um so that's one downtime action for you shannon um Brian, did you want to take a, a quick turn to do one of yours? Yes. I think Merrick will, as the downtime starts, find a quiet, contemplative place, and he will try to commune with Worm. I have many questions over our journeys of different things that I would like to discuss with him. Okay. I think I'll get in my kind of meditative stance, just kind of slowly just do the whole sway and just kind of relax and close my eyes and calm my emotions and then try to communicate with my deity. Okay. I would like a check from you as well. You reach out to Worm in a way you've done many, many times. Um, and I don't know how to describe it. I mean, we've talked about it kind of as a, like a radio signal before, haven't we? Mm -hmm. um, you have a hard time tuning in. Or maybe the signal is hard to find. You're not quite sure. But it takes... It doesn't come as naturally to you as you'd expect. Right, right. Give me either like wisdom or charisma. Nice. And you are patient, you are determined uh, and deliberate, and it doesn't take you long, but you make a connection with Worm uh, and says, ah, there you are. I felt you attempting to reach me, but something was getting in the way. I'm beginning to notice this force putting itself between us more and more as the time goes on. As have I. What just happened since we last spoke? Mm. And I have many questions. First, <clears throat> we have run into a group of cultists. They have a strange symbol. L let me backtrack. Their leader, someone known as Archvaler, I believe it was a title, not necessarily a name, a name was a wizard who seemed to draw upon our own magics to use for his own. He had a strange symbol tattooed on his body. Two X's right next to each other with a line through the middle. We studied through um, the diary of Gorthank, my mentor that brought me to your teachings. And we believed it was a symbol of an old god. Can you give me any information? I think in this space you have access to like, even though it's all like in your head, you can like project yourself as though you have like Gorthank's diary here and you can like show mm -hmm. him your entry where you like take in your own notes or show, show Gorthank's right. page where he had notes on, on many of the gods symbols and you show him this symbol, which I've posted here. Um, and Worm is taken aback at this symbol and looks very he is he is emotive and I don't know how sn snakes are emotive but he has facial expression and emotion just like the rest of us he's he's visually upset 
and kind of in a sad way. Um, like he's kind of overcome with grief, but also like a little bit of disgust. Uh, it's very complex. Um, and after a very long pause, he says, this, this is the symbol of one of my siblings, indeed. One who has not walked the Ravenlands, to my knowledge, in a long time. But if there are humans serving with this symbol, then he must be here. They spoke of making sacrifices. Sacrificing humans. They were intending to do it with us until we defeated them in battle. Sacrificing humans and stealing magic. Mm. Perhaps a way to bring power to your sibling? Perhaps. Perhaps the power granted by your sibling? Um give me give me one moment to look up a note here really quick. Sure. Uh, Worm will go on and explain that this sibling is uh one of the oldest and i'm i have not used a name yet because i am actually like i wrote it down a very long time ago and i'm having a hard time remembering what this god's name is um oh yes placeholder i've heard this name before <laughs> mm -hmm. shall we shall we call him the old god until you can give a name well i have a title but i that like all of the cultists would use and that's the one i've been putting in my notes frequently um so they call him the night walker um and and they described how he was going is going to his goal is to pull a veil over the world and that is why they are called the veilers um but this is all information you kind of gleaned from your interactions with them directly um, I straight up cannot find my note with this god's name, so I might have to come up with a new one. If you are a subscriber, you can DM me some ideas for the name of a god Ooh. if you'd like. Yeah. Um, Thank you. So the yeah. Nightwalker um, helped them is is one of the siblings that among them helped create the world uh, that created everything, um, and the Nightwalkers. Like each of them kind of has something that they're very good at uh, or are very, very keen on with Worm. It's, you know, knowledge and information with Raven. It is um, the soul like gave Raven like infused pieces of himself into everyone. Every living thing goes through a process where part of Raven, it becomes attached to them with one exception now, and that is Cacophony, who now no longer has a soul. Um, uh, oh, <laughs> um, Rust is about strength uh, and, and reaching potential. Um, Clear is about like self-actualization and knowledge of self. Um, and the Nightwalker is the one who came up with magic all of the magic that all of the gods bestow on people ultimately came from like the, the concept and, and the power came from the Nightwalker. Um, uh, and Worm will go on to explain that they had a huge disagreement all together, the gods, about the like what the nature of magic should look like and who should have access to it. The Nightwalker believed that everyone, all sentient beings, should have access to magic innately. And while some of the gods believed, yeah, we should give, you know, we should give, you know, dwarves some, you know, some of them can stone sing because that would be really cool. You know, their purpose is to, to build the earth. Um, 
uh, you know, there's there's some innate magic ability in, in various creatures, but uh, spell casting? No. They all disagreed with the Nightwalker. Uh, and that upset them, and they left. Uh, presumably to go work on their own thing somewhere else. Maybe create another world. They don't know. They haven't seen their sibling in a sure. very long time. That guy sounds cool. Um, but apparently he's back. Dinosaurs, they're back. And siphoning magic for himself and his followers. It would make sense that the interruptions of magic, stealing of magic, that the Nightwalker's agents would be able to do this. He could, he could certainly, I can certainly imagine him giving them that power. Using magic is now apparently very dangerous if it can be stolen and warped, changed. You have other questions, I'm sure. I do. <clears throat> we have talked to a raven sister. Mm. She tells us of raven. That raven is a hollow shell of what he used to be. Mm. Sad. Dreary. Lacking purpose. My friend seeks a way to restore raven his former glory perhaps you should you can shed some light on why raven has diminished raven has always been someone passionate about what we've created passionate about what we do someone who has always been willing to give of themselves to others and spends very little time and effort focusing on themselves. I have not spoken with Raven in quite some time, but I'd imagine everything that has happened over the last century or two has been very hard for them. All-out war, the blood mist, and now these other happenings. I'm sure it has been a great deal for them to process. I'm not sure what uh, sorry, this is me spacing on the word. Um, what consolation? I'm not sure what can be offered, much less consolation to Raven. Hope. Certainly, but if Raven is as low in spirit as you claim, then they will need to decide for themselves to break out of it and figure out how to do that. Surely not without support. Seems like Raven needs inspiration. A well reason said. To... A reason to... <clears throat> Be themselves again, a reason to find joy again, a reason to find passion in their work again. Yes, these have been difficult times, and finding that has not been easy. I must admit that I too have been struggling, particularly recently, with feeling disconnected and cloudy in my thoughts and judgments and I think it started around the same time that these veilers began to act if they have been engaged in the raven lands since the disappearance of the blood mist or even before it would explain what I've been feeling if they are their magic is somehow sapping me of my own. This could prove to be very problematic and not a problem we can ignore for very long. Agreed. 
that was going to lead me to my last question, but you've mostly answered it. How to strengthen my connection to you? Is there anything I could do beyond eliminating these veilers or stopping their their advancement? Something Under to bring you more strength. Knowledge will bring us power. The more we can learn about them and understand how they work, what their goals are, the more we can do to interrupt them, but the better off we'll be for it either way. Understood. And then I think I will slowly break my connection. Okay. Sounds good. And then uh, I know I'm still in a lot of spotlight here. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Three months have gone by. My team has gone on two separate journeys since I started my connection with Worm. Yeah. But I think the last thing that I would like to do is go find Cacophony and share what I've learned about Raven. Yeah, sounds good. I'm I'm just going over my notes really quickly to see if there's anything else I want to give you, especially since you did roll a 10. Um... I think I think I think we're good. I think this is good for now. I agree. Okay. We'll find Cacophony and tell her that I've spoken with Worm as to the situation of Raven. And he feels that Raven, who is passionate, who is someone who gives him himself, has just lost hope and desire in these hard times. And that if we want to restore Raven to his former glory, we have to find inspiration, something to bring him back, something to give him reason and hope and a desire to to be once again. Maybe that will be helping the sisters. Maybe that will be helping the community. Maybe that will be slowing down rust. But we shall have to seek it. Okay. I, I think this is uh, I think this is the crux of the bond that Cacophony is gonna form with Merrick. Um, that they're united in their quest to like figure out like you know what's going on with Raven, like what's siphoning the the connection between the gods and those who worship them. Um, okay, I like it. All right. Gracias. Um, so, speaking of, because, um, Shannon, you still have a downtime action. Um, um, I was doing the sword shadowing. Oh, that's right. Yes. Okay. That sounds good. Because I couldn't get What's close that? to them because he What's hates that me. Plus one to hit someone later, Nick. Mm -hmm. That's what Heck she yeah. wants. That's all any gal wants. Is it finally <laughs> my turn? I'm going to yeah. speed run this. Sorry, wait, ready? let me make sure I understand Shannon's downtime activity. So you're doing preparation to use the sword, or are you asking them to try and identify the properties of the sword? Can I do both? Or no? Just the one? It's it's one or the other. I feel like I need to understand the properties of the sword. Okay. I can... I can mimic them and, and learn how to sword fight on the way. Like, I figure there'll yeah. be plenty of people to make stabbies on. Okay. Um, what does but the yeah, sword um, do? Yeah, what does the sword do? So, okay, that's what, that's what she's studying, trying to figure out. What it do, though, Nick? Yes, so this cutlass... Um, is made of a black material. Um, the lizard folk shaman Keel um, will spend quite a bit of effort. They will, in fact, need to borrow this and, like, spend several days, like, with the sword to try and, like... Again, they're not, like, the most proficient magic user. They don't have, like, a, an intellectual and academic understanding of magic since they don't really have much in the way of a mentor to help guide them. Um, 
but they kind of feel out the sword um, and at, probably at the end of a week um, they will meet up with you um, and give you the sword back and say there are dark dark properties to this sword uh, the material it is made with the metal everyone I've talked to cannot identify where it comes from never have I or anyone I've talked to heard of black metal like this um, it has been cursed uh, in, a, in a horrific way um, I don't know exactly to what end but those killed with this blade their souls are sacrificed are taken and consumed for some nefarious purpose um, I spent a lot of time with the sword trying to ask it to tell me what its purpose was and all I could see were the stars in a black night sky and the stars were red I do not know what this means. Okay, awesome. I mean, not that you don't know what it means, but awesome for all of that extra super awesome information that you gave me just now. I understood what you meant, but thank you for the clarification all the same. <laughs> all right. Um, okay. Yeah. How do uh, I note the preparation of the sword training? Yeah, so Perfect. I was thinking about that earlier today. I think the best way to do it might be to create a global modifier down in the bottom right corner of your main page um, and title it preparation and then like in parentheses, like what the prep was for and how many uses you have left. If you need help making a global modifier, it's probably the most complicated thing on this sheet. I've got it. Um, okay. All right, so preparation, one use out of one for uh, hack and slash and viper strike. I mean, you can just say like swordsmanship, and anytime no, that okay. applies, you can you can use that. And then swordy sword is what it says. Perfect. Okay. Um, so. That is two actions for Andy, two for Shannon. Was that one for you, Brian? I feel like I've taken up so much time with the session gaining knowledge that I'm just going to spend my time <clears throat> preparing to gain knowledge, like researching knowledge of the Valor. Okay, sounds good. And I'll try to take three preparation for that, if that's cool. Um, or I can take one, and that's fine. I think... I think the conversations with worm were i know we we kind of had a short conversation but i think that he would have this would have been over the course of a week like okay. um contacting Alrighty. you and sharing what he knows got it all right john what do you got all right first things first we're using that gold i want to make an art object all right what do you want to make uh Anything in i particular? guess it's going to depend on how i roll Okay. Uh, <laughs> Which came first, the roll or the, the, the fiction? The roll does, and then the fiction. Uh, okay. What do you want me to roll here? We did dex last time. Yeah, we can do another dex, because I think... Whoa! All right. The I think... exact same thing I rolled last time. Yeah, go ahead and take another art object worth 25 gold. Cool. Well, I guess this was... This was gonna try to be like a necklace of some kind. The last time was like a bracer or like a little wristband or bangle. It's like, ah, oh well, it's fine. A bangle? So that, yeah, a bangle. It's like a clip on like a cat? bracelet. B a n g l e, not not b a e n. Have you played Resident Evil Five? No. Oh man. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Looks like a bracelet. Do eight more of these and you'll have ten rings there, John. Sure. Uh, I'll become the Lord of the Rings. That's what I'll do. Oh, it was uh, a Shang-Chi Shang reference. 
Oh. I don't he know literally mentioned Celebrimbor earlier in this uh, episode, so it's fine. He's he's, he's on Middle Earth time. He uh -oh. doesn't he doesn't understand. Nick hasn't read the Samuel really. <laughs> Uh, anyway, <laughs> I have a buddy, or, well, a coworker who nice. I also consider a buddy. He streams reading that, like, or at least oh. he did every week. I think he read the whole thing over the course of several months. Man. Yeah, He's a fucking lunatic, that guy. Wait, uh, he streams it, and it still took him several months. I, I, I don't know how long. I, he might not have it's been streaming book. every week. It is a big. He's book. still reading it, as far as we know. Yeah. True. We'll always. Uh, read it. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so uh, then, you know, after two weeks, finally, someone's like, Hey, Wick, have you seen any kids in these Hedem Hills? <laughs> uh, and Wick, of course, hasn't, but he wants to help look. I don't know how many people are looking for kids right now since I kind of zoned out whenever uh, Cacophony told me she was stalking me. Uh, but <laughs> I kind of want to I want to go and be a proper community member uh, and defend those weaker than me, Nick. Oh yeah, now. that's a way to spin that. Um, give me, give me a um, discern realities, please. I would love to. I've got fucking I've got, shit. Got investigation music. Oh, oh my god, <laughs> these poor kids—they're never gonna um, be found. <clears throat> since I want to free people from bonds, can I aid or interfere with his discerning of reality? Yes, please. Oop. Finally. All right, that's a seven. You get to ask one question and take plus one forward when acting on the answers. Where the uh, fuck these kids at? Okay, give me <laughs> one sec. You said one question. I'm not. I don't care about what's else. So that is a good kids. question. I, my, my aiding or interfering is just parroting what he said and going, "Where the fuck are they?" Like, you know, <laughs> from behind him. Tell me where they are. It's like posturing. Like what? Where's she? Where's Rachel? <laughs> I'm back, fat. <laughs> okay. I'm fat, uh, Oh, interrogation oh, room. That's the name of the track. Uh, let's add that, that to the game, and we'll just go ahead and play that as it's you all. adding even more tracks. <laughs> okay, wh which wh what was your question? Where are they? Yeah, no. where are they? No, you have to ask yeah. from the list. Uh... These are all uh, completely irrelevant. What happened what here, here recently? Useful. What here is useful or valuable? That's going to lead us. That's going to be a clue. Mm -hmm. I would go with the last one. What here is not what it appears to be? I feel... What about the control? I mean, who's really in control? Like, I mean... We're going into the one the exerting I am. control. I'm in control. <laughs> well, the John, one exerting control is the one who's stealing the children. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. John will never ask that question because he always believes that it's his character who's in control. <laughs> yeah. I am in control. What should I be on the lookout for, Nick? Okay. Where are them at? So, you talk to some people who cacophony and Merrick and whoever else is looking for these kids um, doesn't talk to. And you as an empathetic young, like you were empathetic when you were young because people- I've <laughs> run away from home before. Yes, yes, you have. And you understand the challenges and pains of being young in the hollows. Um, you, ta you talk to fellow children. <laughs> and for oh, some wow. strange reason, uh, you have rapport with kids because you're a freak, and they think that. Look that's... at my shiny hair! Pull on it. It's impossible they, to break. They, they think you're cool and charming. Um, you talk to kids, and you get the sense that a lot of the children are really unhappy here in the hollows. Young people yeah. in general feel like the world has opened up to us, like. All of our lives and all our parents' lives, we've been stuck in the hollows. And we get that our parents are set in their ways. Like, they're afraid to leave. That's been their whole life. We are young. The world is our oyster. And it has just opened for us. We want to leave and go check it out. Um, so that is a general tone and sense that you get that, like, 
a lot of kids are ready to leave because their parents won't let them go play outside, essentially. Um, they, they see people like you all, cool adventurers, merchants like Trega and, and, um, and uh, fuck, what's his Robert. name? Robert, who like, they just left their home and traveled here and like, oh my God, we've like never seen a goblin before. She's really cool. She can wield a spear real dope because she used to be a city guard. She could probably kick some of the city guards' asses here. Um, and so they're really interested in, in leaving. And some of their friends, including those who have left, have talked about leaving. Um, but um, there is one child in particular, the first one to leave, and that is Robin Slater. Um, the son of the blacksmith was the first to leave. Um, and some of the kids you talk to say, yeah, something like changed about Robin. Um, like they were really nervous about leaving, but they wanted to. And then suddenly they just got like super brave about it. Something, something changed really dramatically. Um, and they told us all that they were gonna leave um, and to come along with them, that they were gonna lead us to a, a new home. Um, but a lot of us kind of chickened out. They mentioned which direction this home was? Uh, yes. It wouldn't be south, would it? It is in the Sunken Mire, actually. They headed Wait, to what? the swamps. The fuck? Why would they go to the swamps? There's a lot Seriously. to eat in the swamps, says a kid. Like what? When have you been to the swamp? I don't know. Peter, Peter Pan community living in the swamps. Well, I don't know. Lizard folk, they, they've shown me how to catch frogs. I tap him on the head. <laughs> Because there's nothing I can say or do that will ever help another person again. And just look at them really sad. Oh my god. Okay, thanks for your assistance. Uh, here's gold I found in Dem Hills. <gasps> Go. Oh. Uh, and I then them with one of the children people. shout calls after you, Wick? Yeah, what's up? Show us your sword again. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I never did. Don't tell your parents that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so probably by the time that these investigations finish, there are probably eight kids have left at this point. Eight? Whoa. Holy eight? fuck. Well, I not thought that you were not that big. I mean, it's been a month. So, so does a consortium of concerned parents put together a fund of gold and reward to offer up to the people who will find out what happened to their kids? Uh, yes, there is, there is a, there are the, have you seen this child posters and really crude drawings of children <laughs> that basically oh. all look the same. There's one last thing I want to do, uh, which is like, uh, it's literally just casting a spell. Sure. Um, so you can do that. Okay. Uh, I wish to cast a new spell called oh. Oh. Visions Through Time. Uh, so sometime after hearing this news, I'm gonna go head to a creek that's dried up and, like, dig out a little puddle from it, uh, throw in, you know, sand or whatever the hell I need to do to get the spell off the ground, and try to cast the spell, uh, which I will cast as soon as I can find it. It's a success. Oh my god, John, you didn't fail... You didn't fail, I didn't roll. fail a roll for once, guys. I'm yeah. one for three. <laughs> uh, the spell's forgotten. Fuck it. Tell me, what do I see? Okay, let me read this, because I don't think I've ever seen this spell cast before. Um, gaze into a reflective surface to see into the depths of time. The jam will reveal the details of a grim portent to you, a bleak event that will come to pass without your intervention. 
they'll tell you something useful about how you can interfere with the Grim Portent's dark outcomes. Rare is the Portent that claims you'll live happily ever after. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I don't like this spell because it apologizes to me. Uh. So, Nick, Nick, were you ready to describe the depths of time during our stream today? Yeah, <laughs> can you just go ahead and tell me, uh, are these kids about to be fucking eaten by, like, an alligator god? Um, you have a flashback, Wick. You... Okay. We, you have told me your character's history, uh, yeah. how they were betrayed by the Rust Brothers after stealing your family's sword and giving it to them. They kicked your ass and left you for dead. Um, mm -hmm. And then we, you and I have talked about what happened a, after that a little bit. Um, what does your for character, sure. what does Wick remember about those events? Uh, probably everything in very brutal imagery. Uh, okay. that he has internalized as, like, his main source of, like, this is why I'm alive, and there is not a single moment that I do not think about this. Mm, okay. uh, this is more or less the entire way he now views the world. Okay. So, uh, you relive that moment yet again. You are bleeding out, dying, feeling both cold and warm, uh, to the touch of a pool of blood, uh, you see a hooded figure looming over you as you are fading. And the, ca the camera and the viewers will now recognize that this hooded figure is wearing the hood and cloak and is holding a scepter that have the same patterns and style as an archveiler. Not the same archveiler, as the one that you all just killed a couple weeks ago. But but it's it is an archveiler. And so I have a question for you before I proceed with the vision, and that is when you saw this archveiler and intervened and saved uh the Mary Stones, Dola and Hoag, you said that you this this is a moment you think about a lot. Did you immediately yeah. recognize the, the archveiler? Yeah. Okay. Now, not the archveiler, but I reckon. I mean, I literally have one of their swords in my stomach at all times. Mm -hmm. I connected them. I don't know if you, if that was a coincidence of both our weapons being made of entirely black metal. Mm -hmm. But. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know if Cacophony's noticed yet, or anyone else for that matter. You know. But you did. Wick's a strange guy. Just alone, he can distract people. Like, the sword is second. Who cares? <laughs> but, man, he he felt the connection. Because I felt the connection. Yeah. Um, so, speaking of the sword, it, it is well, like, it is manufactured and well made. Your sword, you can kind of, like, manipulate the shape a little bit, right? Kinda. Not really. And and is the material like if you were holding your sword, it would look very rough and ready, or is it also very refined? Uh, recently, it has gotten much more uh, defined, more so than anything else. It was always this like sinister, triangular, uh, like wedge-like weapon that didn't really even have a handle, that he was just flailing around. But after getting used to it and killing demons with it, it has gotten sharper and sharper mm. until at last it has plus two sharpness and <laughs> plus two damage. Okay. So you are, you are, your vision begins with this moment. You are passing out, fading to the black, and this arch veiler stands over you. Uh, with their scepter. They also have a similar sword um, to the Archveiler that we saw. Um, but they're also holding something else. Um, it is this very small creature that they uh, take uh, in their hand and shove in your mouth and hold your mouth closed and force you to swallow it. Uh, which it is, it is this that transforms you. Um, into what you are. Um, and that is that is what you see 
on a regular basis. But in this vision, the hand takes out the, the fairy and begins moving towards your mouth. So and instead sorry. of your mouth, it is Robin Slater's mouth that this fairy is being shoved into. And Robin begins to change and transform as well. I puke into the water. Oh, the vision is obscured. Ending the vision, and then I go to find uh, Rick San, or uh, not Sanchez, uh, Rick Moss, who I would never go to speak with in a million fucking years. Mm. <laughs> Maybe that's a good time to do a break, Nick. Yeah, Ooh. let's. Let's cue up the Moss Family Den music and we will we will talk to Rick Moss at the end of our break. We'll be right back. All right, we are back with Song of the Ravenlands. We have seen some some dark visions. We've gotten some disturbing answers. We have located some lost kids. Or at least yeah. have a vicinity. So, um, yeah, you oh. all have some stuff you could do. Um, we're we're gonna kind of move out of this downtime phase, um, and and really, there's. I have not planned exactly what you all. You all could go to the sunken mire and look for kids. You could go to Widow's Peak and check out this second tower if you wanted. No, we're going for the kids. Okay. Yeah. Agreed. We go. Well, I go to it Rick is, and say, "Hey, well. do your thing. Summon the people. Summon the people. Yeah. The you know the, the boys. Comfort eagle. The fam. Does he have the like a, con eagle. a Does he have like a conch shell that he blows that that we all like respond into to? the yeah into I the night. I barge into the kitchen, straight <laughs> past the guard. Uh, flip them off if I have to. Kick in the door. This is business time. We got people to save. And you need my permission to do this? All right, fuck it. See ya. Uh, I go to the swamp. Uh, I hear the commotion in the kitchen and follow him out the door. Wick, what's going on? I'm saving some kids. Rick doesn't want to, apparently. Big fucking surprise there! Oh! Right. Give me a minute. I'll grab my pack. And I go running off. Cool. I hope you bring food, because I sure as shit don't have access to any. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Can we, can we re up on rations in this month? Uh, yeah. The This journey is only going to take you a day to get there, though. Then I got us covered. We're good. All right. Uh, Cacophony's my stalker, apparently. Or Basil's stalker, so she would have heard me, and, you know, when doesn't Chives get the, uh, word out? Yeah, I think, I think Cacophony just, like, sees, you know, a ruckus of, of Wick just being like, forget it! And then just, like, losing his shit and just being, like, like, tromping off to the swamp, and she's like, well, he's clearly got some shit going on, so I want to go see what this is about. Chives, Chives jumps around from roof to roof, making significant eye contact with each of us to get our attention. And, uh... <laughs> He's the best. He's my favorite. Yeah. What a weird fucking animal. All right. So I guess we're undertaking a journey yeah. towards the, the swamps. Yes. I will take uh, undertake a perilous journey. Uh, so I, that requires some wisdom checks from y'all. I ahead. slap. Basil, and tell him to find us the path for once. I will be. We gotta the, go fast. I will be the the. What is it? The trailblazer. The scout. Trailblazer. Oh yeah. The Portland trailblazer. Trail I feel like I need to be the quartermaster. After Ooh. I okay. cannot believe you, Cacophony. <laughs> Cacophony, what what role did you take? It oh, would be a scout. I was, I was gonna say scout. <laughs> oh, I yeah. fail as well. 
Y'all, I'm racking up points tonight. I'm going to be leveling you gotta, you up. You got to catch up. Okay, but Andy's, yeah. because of his move, is considered a 12 plus. Um, and he... Uh, just 10, 10 plus. Or 10 sure. plus. Yeah, okay. Um, so you get there quickly, but um, I'm going to need everyone to mark off two rations for this journey. So a total of, of eight. I got um, it. Okay. Um, I the... legit did not bring food for this. If we starve, we starve. Um, okay, but, uh, we're gonna need, we're gonna need, uh, a moment here as I, oh, fuck. Okay. Uh, I actually prepared multiple encounters, uh, and, and I am, I, John, <laughs> I'm looking at you when I say I yeah. actually have prepared a table. No, I don't <laughs> like, believe you. I, I'm going to. Um, I need screenshots. I yeah okay. <laughs> so um, <laughs> I need you. I need someone to roll me a, a two-sided die. On a one, you all get Kurge, and on two, you get Lin. Th there you go. That's my that's my proof. Boom. Okay, you got Lin. I don't know what that means. Okay. Um. All right. So you all um, are hiking uh, down the not so worn trail outside. Well, there, the tra there isn't really a trail that goes to the sunken mire. Um, but from what you gather from the kids uh, who pointed um, pointed some stuff out on a map, or, or at least in the, with the information they gave you, the kids. He grew up in the area. What? Yeah, I, was I mean, stabbed over there. Yeah. There have been some more recent rumors that since the the disappearance of the blood mist and since people have been able to like go deep into the mire without fear of the blood mist, um, there are rumors of some sunken uh, buildings in in the sunken mire um, uh, that that uh, Robin said that he was gonna go find and that that's the, probably where they were gonna go set up. Uh, and try and start a new settlement for the, themselves, um, these kids. So you start heading in that direction. Um, you need to uh, fjord one river or hike around uh, the lake um, to avoid having to go over water. Um, but you all are hustling. Um, and, and Cacophony's feeling particularly fit and strong um, today. So she, she can help kind of glide some of you over the river um or at least get you most of the way across the river before she has to dump you in and let you swim the rest of the way um everyone you've been you've been doing downtime for a month so everyone just heal up um and remove any debilities that you have um and shannon uh cacophony rather um you are on watch but you're very distracted um, you're like trying to keep an eye and an ear out for these kids, any sign of them. Um, and you hear a massive explosion, uh, up ahead. Something just explodes without warning. You have no idea what it is. Um, and you catch, um, as you all hike closer towards it i mean it's it's still quite a ways off maybe uh, still a half a mile away but you start to catch the scent of sulfur oh okay i'm gonna pass that on and be like hey i think it's demons uh smelling sulfur that's a demon smell no uh also the gonna... smell of bodies rotting let's go that as well oh, fuck. i'm just gonna Shout it out to my compatriots. Okay. We charge ahead. Yeah. All Notably, right. Notably, I did not bring a coffin with me this time, gang. You didn't? No. Oh, no. It's true. Oh, no. I better not fucking die in the swamp. Oh, <laughs> I'm buried. It'd be so sad. It's true. Okay. Or Even if I you did, we're not dragging thing. you back with that coffin anyway, man. Mm. Where you fall is where you fall. I just, yeah. That's as why a you friend, put me I'm in telling the coffin you. And bury that's why he brings the coffin with him. <laughs> All right. 
The, <laughs> the swampy forest opens up. And you look upon a giant glade surrounded by trees. Oh, I should change the music. Hang on one sec. Sorry. Man, these fucking glades. I was going to say, that's where all the trouble lot, fucking I starts. Use a lot of glades. Um, Bales. We'll trust the glade. Glades, copses. Um, let me find some sort Copses of adventure music. Mm-hmm. No, a glade is the inverse of a copse. Oh, yeah. They're spelled completely differently, Andy. I understand. I, I mean, it made total sense to me, too. The functional inverse, you Luddite. <laughs> True. Um, oh, yeah. Shout out to Valid Opinion, who, who caught Nick saying Fjord the River, by the way. <laughs> oh, <laughs> wait. Was I supposed to say Ford the River? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, you Ford Fjord. the Fjord. Sorry. Ford the Fjord. <laughs> um, Fjord, get about it. Fjord, get, get about, about it. it. All right, uh, so the forest opens up to this giant glade. Uh, the ground is covered by black sand, uh, completely dried up in this area. You see no plants in the impact site. Uh, you see some rocks that could be the remains of a house, maybe? Uh, but there is someone sitting in the middle of the, of the glade, uh, just on the edge of the explosion. Uh, a young girl uh, with her eyes fixed on the ground. This area completely reeks of sulfur. There is smoke coming off of the black sand. Uh, and the sand rattles as the wind gently blows through the glade. What do you do? Is it one of our kids, Nick? Uh, this child does not match the description of any of the children. Um, I look at them. He is clearly evil, no? Like okay. we're all we're all thinking the same thing, right? I'm just like I'm gonna like look around at my like she's in the middle of like a black sand beach in the middle of a glade by herself. People are getting pied piper. We don't know where every frickin' town Hey right! I yell at them. <laughs> they do not respond. Um fuck. Somebody throw a rock at it, quick. Uh, uh, I think Ch- Chives uh, walks up to the girl to to to. There's like a massive field friend. of black sulfur in front of us. It's not massive. It's it's the size of like a small room. That's rattling okay. around. The sand yeah. is like gently like it's. It looks like the sand is light. Like the the wind is trying to, you know, blow it away like it's dust. Oh, okay. This, this music is too happy. Burrowed underneath. So Chives goes up and, yeah, and Chives, like Chives walks up and and tries to be like, petting zoo style, like very friendly to this person, um, and offers some some, uh, uh, uh like very innocent ba and uh, and some nuzzles. Uh, there is no reaction to this. She stares straight ahead. I will. Start uh, I think. I think. I think we circle around, stay in the trees, and uh, leave this person to their work. I'm not leaving this person yet. It's, I'm circling around to try to get a look at their face. It is a young girl staring straight ahead into what it appears to be. It is a young face. girl, or it appears to be a young girl? It's a young girl, Andy. <laughs> it looks like a young girl. She's got, like, dirty and tattered clothes. Uh, she looks like she's been traveling. Um, and she is just like blankly, like dead in her eyes, staring. You got any? Uh, I I look at Merrick before he wanders off. Mm-hmm. You got any spells that could uh, make me go fast, and or protect me go? from a giant scorpion underneath the sand? Nope, but I can help deal with it when it shows up. I will. I will actually say. Wait, we have a fucking flyer. Cacophony, you don't even like plans. Just go, do something. As Cacophony <laughs> thinks, I will look at this girl in the middle of the circle, and I want to take a look at the area. Does it look like she's staring at something directly? Does she standing in the middle of the circle, of the sand, or is there something? Is she maybe like offset, 
Is she, there a middle to the circle? She is. Uh, she is kneeling down at the edge of the sand. She is not in the sand herself. Mm. Um, but she is looking at the like steaming heap uh, where you deduce the explosion occurred. This is a pilot fish. This is a pilot fish. If I ever saw one, yeah. this like innocent. There, there, there is no innocent in this. Li- okay, yeah. No, she's cl- she's very clearly up to some shit. I think we skipped um, this. We skipped the prepared skip. content of your DM. No, we okay. skipped the oh. trap. <laughs> I don't know how to skip it. Can, is that can we like just can we just be like bye, bitch? <laughs> just keep no, going. the party. Good. We want to save some kids. The GM here's a kid. Yep. The players yeah. ignore the kid. <laughs> you know what? We well, are on to kids. you, They're GM. How will you punish us this time? All right, so Nick, there's only one hero in this party, and if I have to go and spear tackle a child again, I'll do it. I've done it before to a hobbit. I'll do it now. Can't be that much different. All right. Uh, I'm just seeing if anyone else has any bright ideas, because all I got hmm. is Ben Barth with Gates. <laughs> now let me. I will. I will walk up to the child and shake their shoulder. Like, oh, are you fuck. okay? Um. They close I'm their eyes and begin. To, they close their eyes and begin to weep. What? They close their eyes and begin to weep. Okay. Uh, Chives continues his petting zoo routine and tries to comfort the child by just being near and curled up. Um. She yeah, she lets Chives do that. I think Cacophony's just like on high alert, and she's just got like her crossbow, just like out and like ready and like he's like sh- like shifty eyed like because she is distracted because she can't she's like something horrible is about to happen I will try to stand her up if I can from the kneeling position and pull her away from the circle of sand say come <laughs> come back here with me give me a parlay please As you try and coax her to step back. Hey. Nine. Is that is that my dog fussing? I was gonna say, was that Nova? Yeah. I thought I heard that in my headset, but it must be her. <laughs> okay. Oh, pilot. Um They will do what you ask, but need some concrete assurance of your promise right now. Um We'll say, come, come back away from the circle. We will protect you. Tell us what has happened here. What caused this explosion? See if I get a reaction. Um, puppy girl, what's up? Come here. Um, she will not respond verbally. Um, however, she will stand up and she will walk back away from the sulfur, the, the sand with you. Um, and no matter how much you try and get her to speak in this in this moment, she will not. Um, and eventually, she will, like, she will just follow you all um, as you proceed forward into the swamp. Um, she is not ready to speak quite yet, she, and she like gestures as such. Um, uh, can I give her a ration? Yeah. Yes, that that sounds like a good concrete. I I, I, I rip off a, hun- a, hun- a hunk of bread and some cheese from the town and uh, give it to her. Okay. Am I getting yeah. like this child has just cast the spell vibe, Nick? Um, you get a vibe that magic was cast there. Yes. I want to do like discern realities or something sure you can discern realities and study the situation wait we can just ask to do moves you what? can you can literally if you just say nick i'd like to take a look around 
Oh my god! You can literally trying, do that. That's what I said. At any time. <laughs> I was trying. To, I was trying to narrate and discern realities for the situation. For the uh, past, okay, like, sorry. Nine was, minutes. That oh, was not. Clear, that was not clear to me. Um, oh good. Feel free to speak up and say. Cacophony, go. Okay. No, cacophony, go. Okay. She's up. Yeah, give me three what questions. What happened here recently? What is about to happen? Who's really in control here? Oh what? my god, John. <laughs> you kill it. Into um, the ocean and it'll okay. Yeah, yeah. Alright. Um Okay, so uh what here is not what it appears to be. One. Okay. Um yeah, she gets three with that roll, right? Yes, you get yeah. three questions. What here is not what it appears to be? Um nothing. I mean this is a child. There is no anglerfish monster under the sand. It it appears as though some magic mishapped and resulted in an explosion, which is something that can happen. Um, certain types of magic, especially darker magic, is less stable. Um, so she's a necromancer, is what you're saying. Well, um... It doesn't... Okay, so what here is not what it appears to be. It does not appear as though she cast the spell. Nothing okay. about her appearance would indicate like that she has any propensity for magic. Um, she is not charred. She, she, like, she is not a part of the explosion. But there are bits and remains of other figures, other, other creatures strewn about the site. It looks they like... They were human... Uh, oh, oh, here we go. Um, well, you asked what what is not what it appears to be. So it does not appear that she cast the spell. Okay. Uh, okay, so what do you guys, the next one, what is about to happen? Pick two things. We're about to walk mm -hmm. off. That's what's about to happen. Well, okay, so what happened here recently? I mean, we know that there was an explosion, but like... I will give you more detail on, on what what exactly transpired okay. with that question, if you'd like. Yes, please. Okay. Uh, so as you're looking around the remains, um, you begin to see evidence of, uh, of veilers. There are some of the, some metal shards of ritual daggers. There are tatters of robes that you've, you know, a month ago saw them wearing. Uh, it looks like Veilers were here and were attacking this girl or, or with this girl or, or something, and they all got blown up. Cool. Can't say I'm sorry to hear about that. All right. Um, so then the last one... Um, was really in control. You think so? I mean... I was... You know the answer. It's me. <laughs> oh, no, it's okay. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Nobody let Wick near here. Um, or, or, or what is about to happen? I guess. I was well, gonna. I'm sorry. This. It's your, it's your win. Don't, don't. No, let no, me. no. I, I, I rely on you guys to help me with this because I'm. So I was even thinking like, what here is useful or valuable oh, to me? Yeah. But like, I guess that, that doesn't really girl. fit in this. Hang well, on. yeah, the girl's valuable, right? Like, mm -hmm. what? I'm, I'm looking at something really quick. Hang on, John. Sorry, um... I'm, I'm looking at John's sheet and he's. Oh, for sure. Me on it. <laughs> <laughs> trying to keep it hidden I um out, if you just put something like is always in control i'm gonna rage <laughs> john is in <laughs> control <laughs> on a 10 plus john is really in control on a 7 to 9 right. john is pretty much in control on a 6 plus john is somehow still in control <laughs> <laughs> explain how <laughs> the gm right. will tell you how on, on a six and less, John is in control and gains experience because he truly is in control. <laughs> yeah. He's a power gamer. There you go. I'm All right. Who, who's who's yeah. really in control here? That's that's my question. Uh, you all. This girl is in in I knew it. shock. Um, <laughs> she is she is clearly traumatized by whatever transpired, um, and she is um, effectively incapacitated. Like. She is not going to be able to speak because she is having a hard time processing what happened. Um, so okay. she she needs you all right now. Mm. Okay. Mm. Uh, all I right. make a, a flower crown for her and for Chives and sit her on Chives to walk with us. Good call. That's very sweet. 
All right, so we're walking to the Noble swamp. Noble steed. Okay. Um. All right. And Chives turns turns around and like steals a bite of the bread she was working on. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, um, you make your way deeper into the sunken mire, and uh, eventually you come upon a small camp. Um, with various tents, you know, some canvas strewn over some branches and lashed down, uh, and then uh, the beginnings of several tree forts. Uh, and I need I need some better music Aww. than this. Literal I look. lost boys, Peter. They're li- they're style. just camping. Yeah. Uh, here we go. It's my turn. No. <laughs> Let's see if fishing village is appropriate. I mean, it's not a village, but it's not appropriate either. The community. True. How many people are there, Nick? Uh, like eight, seven. <laughs> uh, there are, in fact. Um, let me think this through before I make commit to a decision. Commit. There are 20 kids here. 20 kids here? Yes. Okay. So some of them are obviously from other or neighboring villages or whatever. Including ours? Yeah, because we only had eight people, eight children from the hollows go missing. Plus this little unnamed girl who isn't from our town. Like, we don't know who she is. That's why we all thought she was evil. Or mostly it was just Cacophony who thought she was evil. Um... Yeah, so, okay, so there's, like, a huge collective of, like, when you say kids, are we saying, are we, like, are they, like, teenagers, or are they, like, full-on children? Adolescents to teens. Okay. So, like, eight years old to, like, 17, or? Yeah. Okay, cool. Fuck. All right, Merrick will stride forward. Oh, boy. (laughs) Merrick will turn back to Wick. You're like, I have an idea. What's up? If you're going to cast fear on them and drive them into the swamp so they'll drown or get eaten by alligators, how about you not? What the fuck is wrong with you? What the fuck is wrong with you? (laughs) That's what you do. You cast scary, spooky, wizardry, well, clerical shit. Guys, the kids. The girl. And try to figure out who's in charge here in the camp. Fuck, I haven't told you guys what I saw, have I? No, I don't believe that was All right, huddle! Team, huddle. Okay, we huddle. We're huddling. I put a shoulder over Merrick, uh, look across from Basil, and don't even touch Cacophony. Almost I'm going to, like, pull my wing away from him. Get the fuck away from me. You're not part of this. Uh, (laughs) Chives, come here! Uh, (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Getting your chives. Ch- Ch- chives with the girl on his back is just in huddle. the middle of the huddle, just chilling. Yes. Okay. All right. First things first. <laughs> He's got his arm up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna Sorry. do it. Okay. Right. Uh, first things first. Valors did it. They're fucking around with dark, spooky magic. No big deal. Uh, more, more of the same. Second of all, uh, Robin, he seems to be in a pretty extreme danger. I don't know the time limit of the, uh, you know, spell that I casted to learn this information. Uh, So we're going to have to work quickly. Mm -hmm. Uh, Next up, they're fucking kids. We're not going to be able to bully them and tell them to go home. Uh, Right. They're going to do what kids do. So keep that in mind, I say, looking at Cacophony, who's murdered so many people in front of me by now. Not <laughs> children, <laughs> mostly, I don't think. I'm just saying, guys, uh, we're not the most sociable or well-liked people, and we have a bad tr- track record with uh, creatures smaller than us. You killed the Hobbit. Nobody yeah. else here killed the Hobbit but I don't know you. what you're talking about. Uh, to yourself, I say as I'm collecting more herbs and flowers for making gifts for people. As oh, as great. This is so a 30 year old man. There's comes not into a lot a of herbs and flowers. In a swamp? 
All right, now I yeah, know little, I little, look little like a monster. Grow. There you go. But I'm also a curiosity. So why don't we let me actually talk to some kids rather than we go up to them and say, hey, who's your leader? Because we all know how much teenagers love confrontation. Mm, I was going to go with empathy. Yeah, because children are empathetic. I, I, I think just... these kids... <laughs> I think these kids are frustrated from being infantilized and if you infantilize them we will make enemies of them you should treat them like adults not like yeah merrick uh that's okay. exactly what i was gonna do but you know what wick you go for it thanks so, 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 so be on the lookout for people with like daggers made of black metal and uh, people who want to eat your magic there could be spies or invisible folk Luckily, we're in a marsh, so I can look for footsteps that are being made when no one's fucking there, right? I guess. Okay. Right. I trust your eyes more than mine. Uh, and uh, I, I guess I put the hand in the middle over Chives and the child who was just bellowed at between all four of our voices. <laughs> like, Team Comfort Eagle. <laughs> we're making a plan. Okay. One, two, three, break. Right. Hell yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. As you look around, the kids are busy at work, you know, building, organizing. Um, they've got actually a pretty respectable setup here for as tiny as it is. I mean, they're literally camping and building a tree fort, but like they have rations that are like neatly organized they have people like with tools and weapons like there's people coming back bringing fish and frogs and uh, someone with like a, a pocket full of lichen that uh, basil you would recognize is medicinal um like they they seem to know what they're doing um robin is here robin slater um as well as uh wick you would also recognize um, there is a uh, Moss family child from who is in the middle of their, um, what do you call it? An agog? A goge? A goge? The the yeah. like, you know, initiation the Spartan training hell. Yeah. Ritual. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know that you see in three hundred is like oh our our three hundred are trained through since they are children and if they. Don't kill, kill each a wolf, other. They become a king. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, <laughs> like there Seems is logical. There is also like a Moss family child who like has some Moss family armor here. Not that they've earned it quite yet, um, but they Richard. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We can call him Richard. I'll write that down. Um, yeah, it's another name for Dick. So now we have Rick, Dick, and Wick. <laughs> oh fuck! Is this is this Rick's? Son, little Ricky. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, that puts a whole Ricky. different spin on like you don't need my permission to go save them kids. Um, oh, true. But yeah, they seem to be doing well, and and Robin is not pale and weird looking like you. Well, that's a relief. But he's uh, standing there talking to two other kids. So when a bunch of adults and a goat with another child on it shows up, uh, what's the immediate... We're not the most subtle. We're not sneaking in here. Yeah. Uh, is, if you approach openly uh, and without like trying to conceal your presence, uh, one of the kids will just shout, like, uh, Hey, Ricky! Uh, and like the kids will look up from their conversation and... Um, Ricky and Robin will uh, step forward with their weapons drawn and say, Hey, you're from the Hollows. What are you doing here? Richard, what, what the fuck, man? I could say the same to you. Why are you in a swamp? No, never mind. I don't care. I point at Robin. If, where's Robin at? <laughs> Standing next to Ricky. Robin! You're with. Have you talked to any... Yeah, yeah, you... We've... I balk, like... Yes. I am Wick. I go up to them. I point at the girl in tow. Uh, do you know this one? 
they like look over or like around your your arm and they're like no who is she it, we found her in the woods like three miles away did you hear the explosion it was a pretty big explosion no no okay. not from here did have you uh, seen any like weirdly veiled men who have like black iron daggers what are you on about what do you mean, what am no, I on? No, we I'm haven't asking... seen anybody. You're the first person, people we've seen in weeks. Is she joining us? I don't know. She looks Are you joining them? That's, a, that's up to her. I walk up and push Wick to the side and say, we're here to help you set this up more fully. Is there anything you need from us uh, right now as you establish your village here? Why are they making a village? They're off exploring the world. That'd be counterintuitive. They need their own springboard from which to they start. They need a home base. Oh, they're clearly making yeah. a mercenary band and going to they learn the trials and hardships so of this world. It, that is the path they have chosen for themselves. What help can we offer? I don't know. What can you do? We can help you make medicines, make poisons, make shelters. I can offer you so some of can, my feathers provide, for. We can provide security. This one can dance, I say, pointing to Merrick. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Brian. Uh, <laughs> we, we, bring the, so we bring the wisdom of, of many different parts of the hollows. And we want to make sure that you're safe so that we can report back to the Hollows that you're all doing okay. Help us help you. We're doing fine, but we could use some help making some shelters. Cool. Excellent. And one of us is not feeling well, and we're not really sure what to do. Will you let me take a look at them? Yeah. Uh, Ivan over here got sick yesterday and uh, yeah. hasn't gotten better. Um, Where's Ivan from? What did he eat? Ivan is from another village to the west. Um, Beyond the swamp? Yeah. How do you know to come here? He He got a message just like Robin. From who? What's what's the swamp subreddit that you're all hearing about this? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Who's the moderator? <laughs> I don't know. You'd have to ask him. Hey, Robin, I say, staring right next to the guy. Oh, oh, sorry. I thought you were talking about Ivan. Um, Robin's like, look, are you going to help or not? Yeah. I'm already moving to find Ivan. Yeah. Okay. Let's do a let's do a help montage. Okay. And I'm hey, taking. Help. I'm taking this, the girl. I'm taking the girl with me to wherever Ivan is, so that she can have a place to rest as well. Yeah, Chives will stick with you. I'm gonna go help some kids build some tree houses. Sounds okay. good. Which scene are we doing first, Nick? Um, we'll do we'll do Basil. Well, I don't even know if we need to really do a scene unless you want to have a scene talking to these kids, Andy. Let, let's uh, let's work on Ivan for now. Yeah, I mean, I think you're able to build shelters. I'm not even going to make you roll. Like, okay. you help them construct shelter. It's, yes. it's great. Uh, it builds rapport. Some of the kids are, like, really interested in, in chives. Uh, some of the kids are really interested in, like, just, like, learning how you build shelters, which I'm sure is different than how what they've Ooh. been doing, which is just hanging canvas over branches or... Uh, I think after that, I also show them how to make their own bows. And uh, oh shit! And maybe do some hunting lessons. Okay. You, you put like okay. full Boy Scouts like six month training course in the nap. Yep. Well, all That's of that might plan. take a couple days to to imbue. That's fine. All of that knowledge on. So let's just yeah, let's take it slow and see if. Sorry. No, no, it's it's fine. I like I like where like it's cool that like that is where Basil's at. Like great. Let me. I would I would love to spend days with these kids teaching them some skit some you know life skills some survival skills um yeah. it's good to know that that's where where you are at um 
so in terms of Ivan, you check on him, and this is a case of food poisoning. Mm. You're keenly okay. aware of it, Merrick, because you do everything in your power to avoid this back at the right. Moss family kitchen. Um, he's just got an, a, a very upset tummy. Okay. I will try to give him some, like, I will look through the rations they have and try to find something simple and small for him. Be like, you need to eat this. You need to drink water. Yeah, you so this is... You sleep and relax. The water is the important part. And I will look, be like, what have you been eating? Um, there is a, a number of fish, uh, and, and frogs, like I mentioned, being carried in, um, they've brought some rations with them, but they've been trying to use those as, like, emergency, right. uh, rations, because they're, they're more, uh, shelf stable. Yeah. Um, I'd like to take a look at their rations and look to see if anything has spoiled. Uh, nothing has spoiled, but here's, here's their biggest problem. Fresh water. Mm -hmm. Um, a lot of the water has been sitting still here, especially mm -hmm. since for a week or so, there was no fresh water coming in from the mountains in this area due mm -hmm. to the dam. True. Do they have like water stored up like in barrels or buckets or something like that? No, they don't have barrels or buckets here. What they have are like some water skins. Um, mm -hmm. But they have used one of their canvases to like kind of create a trap. Yep. Um, for rain, any rainfall. Um, and there has mm -hmm. been some, because it, it's still spring. Um, but they've used a lot of that up. Like, they have it set up to collect mm -hmm. that, but there hasn't been a ton of rain mm -hmm. recently. Or, or, hang on, no, it's been a month since the dam blockage. Yeah, why don't they just move their camp upriver? Hmm. Or out of the swamp? Just, like, a mile. Uh, I mean, Be closer to fresh water. Yeah. Well, what I would like to do, Nick, as you sit and contemplate this, I would like to to ask a couple of them to use this canvas and gather up some of the water, mm -hmm. even the swamp water, into a canvas so that they have like a good deposit of water sitting there, even if it's dirty, mucky, disgusting, whatever. And then I would like to cast a spell. Sure, give me your cast a spell. Oh, sure. All right. I will cast I think that is a partial success, correct? Yes, so you have to choose one from this list. Uh, I will you... lose I will lose the spell that I'm going to cast as I cast Sanctify. Sanctify. Food or water you hold right. in your hands while you cast the spell is consecrate what that you hold in your hands. Yes. Um, in addition to now being holy or unholy, the affected substance, substance is purified of any mundane spoilage. So, I would like to put my hands in the water and try to mm -hmm. purify it so that it is safe to drink. Yeah, I Damn think both hands I, can do that or not. I think if y'all are taking a large amount of time to spend with these kids, like mm -hmm. this role can kind of count as like spending a lot of time kind of doing sanctify mm -hmm. and mass and mm -hmm. doing like a. a, a a bigger casting of it um, that, that counts for all of the water that they've collected. Um, okay. And they are in yeah, awe yeah. as the water, like, turns clear, all of the, like, muck disappears uh, <clears throat> by means of magic uh, and the water as, as you and they taste it is very fresh. Um, and um, Ivan uh, has plenty of fresh water to rehydrate. <laughs> Okay, so we'll while those sure. two are playing survival experts and like Les Stroud and uh, <laughs> Dual Survivor Man, uh, Cacophony, I don't know what you're doing, but I actually want to talk with you. <clears throat> At least like, I think before I grill these children uh, into annoying them what? and like figuring out stuff. what what as when Wick walks up to you to have this conversation, what are you doing? Are you helping kids out with something? Are you... Yeah, like we set up some cool, like little targets, and I'm teaching them how to throw daggers. All right, never mind. She's already lost. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, some You're of them kids have how weapons. To... This yeah, is a playground for weapons. her. Yes, Everyone some else of them is have like weapons. They survival. need to know how to use them. Survival. 
playtime, and I'm looking for threats, Nick. Are there? Okay. I'm so sure there, part I, of survival is knowing John, how to protect yourself. Yes. Uh, John, I'm sure there are kids who are like wary of these weird people who wander into their village. And I understand not that. You guys are the builds. You don't feel the urgency that Wick feels, clearly. Wick feels very pressed for time right now. Okay. That's, that's something you'll have to accept. Uh, so while barely keeping his cool and lit on, and like, why are you guys in a swamp? Whatever. I'm going to ignore that. Okay. They're playing survivor. Cool guys. I'll be the dumb one. Uh, and just ask them like, so how, who did, what's bringing you to the swamp? Right. I, over these couple of days, while mm. I'm pretending to not be on the lookout for invisible people, uh, I want to like slowly get Ricky or not Ricky, uh, Richard and uh, Robin to open up like, hey, remember, I'm the cool uncle who became a weird mutant. Uh, aren't I a freak show? You can totally relate to me. I hate your grandpa, too. Uh, you know, we have similar bond, you know, fuck the family. I get it. I'm a sympathetic dude, Nick. What do you want from me? You're you say you're sympathetic, but what what have you contributed to this community in the last several days? I brought them these three dumb fucks, okay? <laughs> <What>? <laughs> and a goat and a girl. And look, Dick. I bring I bring um, the rash or the rationale. I'm in control. <laughs> That's what I bring. <laughs> I, uh... Neurotic control. I realized in the John is in control move that on a on a seven to nine, John will tell you how he's in control, and on a ten plus, he true. doesn't have to. That's um, very true. <laughs> is that a parlay? I think I feel like this is a parlay. Um, Nick. I I don't know what leverage you have over them. You haven't contributed, but my team has, and we're one unit, right? Yeah, but they don't give a shit. Actions. Speak louder than they, other people. I'll show them the cool sword that everybody so desperately wants to see, Nick. Okay, I'll, give, I'll teach them a thing or two. I'm me, the fighter. Okay, give me parlay with. All right. Thank you. Fuck yeah. Oh dang. I was I was just so expecting you to fail and me being able to yeah. be like, fuck you, John. What do you contribute? <laughs> <laughs> like oh yes oh yeah you sure went through the agog and i just fucking beat his ass in a sword so, fight or whatever yeah so i think i think you bond more with richard uh moss um good old richard who takes an interest in you and like he he is a very curious and genuine young man you find maybe maybe uncomfortably so because he he is throughout the the last several days, you know, once he's warmed up to you, um, he's been asking you things like, so I know that the family like really doesn't like you. And I'm sorry if that's like a sensitive topic, you don't have to answer any questions no. about it, but I'm like, no, it's not. What is it like to be hated by Rick and everyone else? I, it's so much pressure, you know, to be in the Moss family. How do you deal with it? Or how did you deal uh, with it? I mean, I, I guess I know how you dealt with it. You left. Yeah, I ran away from home. I joined a bunch of strangers I didn't know. And then I got stabbed multiple times until I almost died. You're old enough to know that now. That we're outside of town and you are literally walking down the exact same path as I did. You... You think these other kids are going to stab me? No, I'm pretty sure someone else is going to stab a bunch of children, though. What do you mean? Well, and I, you know, I I touch Ricky on the shoulder like the weird, uh, non-creepy uncle in that familial sense and be <laughs> like, we point out to the swamp that just represents the unknowns and dangers of the world. When you look out there, Richard... What do you see? I I mean, right now I see a swamp, but beyond that, it's a world that no one's seen in centuries. That's right. Dangers. Perils. 
murderers, demons, things that want to kill you. Now, I'm telling you this because I go out there more often than I'd like to admit. Even, you know, before the blood mist fell. Like, I was out there, man. It's not fun. I'm not telling you this to tell you to go home because, honestly, uh, your grandpa's an asshole who I detest from the bottom of my soul. I'm telling you this because when I go out there, I change into somebody I don't like being. And when I walked into your camp, uh, I took a look around with my four companions who are very used to killing things. And I thought to myself, wow, isn't this the perfect target to get some spell components? I'm wondering, and I'm concerned, Ricky, that I am not the only one thinking this. And that somewhere out there, maybe, you know, like a mile to in that weird little structure you can kind of see if you like really close your eyes and like peer, that someone is planning something very malicious for you. And I would really, really like to stop that from happening. I, yeah, I mean, I've talked to my parents and other grave wardens, and I, I know how dangerous, like, the Rust Brothers and demons are, and, you know, the undead, we can deal with them. They're, the, they're not even a threat. Yeah, but, you know, they're dumb. You just attack them. Easy. But me and these other kids... We would rather be out here like learning it for ourselves than just being told oh it's all dangerous oh it's all scary oh yeah because look at look at what i mean i've never seen this swamp before i have been so excited to explore it and i get what you're saying and you know we do need to be careful i mean that that girl uh, who will have to go back and talk about what she's said over the last couple days since she decided to open up, Lynn, she, she had a terrifying experience. And, you know, those, those veilers came after her. That's, and that's terrifying. Yeah. But, you know... I've been taught how to protect myself and I'm teaching others. We have we have some weapons and Robin says that he picked this place because no one would come here. No one would look in a swamp for kids. I did. Hmm. So you're Did saying I should Robin just... ever tell you what got in his head to come here? Was it a voice? Was it a person? Look, he was he, it ju- he asked me to keep it secret, but he said he had like a dream and he was told to come here, and that's what gave him the idea. Just a to... Just a dream, nothing else? Yeah. But some of the other kids from the other villages, they also said they had the same dream. And, like, that's a sign, right? Like, that means it was the right thing to do if, like, we're all having this dream. Can I cast a spell on you? What do you want to do? I want to show you what I think has occurred. And I want you to tell me if... Honestly, I should probably do this to Robin. But I can cast this multiple times over multiple days. And I want to show you what it's like having one of these dreams. These magical moments of clarity that just pop into your head. He will uh, talk to Robin and convince him to let you do this um, as a result of your 13 on your parlay. 
Wow, thanks. Um, I'm gonna cast telepathy and charm person on these fucking kids. <laughs> <laughs> Absolute creep. Uh, okay. Hey, so someone baited these children into a swamp. I'm trying to get them out of it. This is anti creep behavior. Don't happen. Okay, what? Sorry, what is the aim of telepathy and charm person? Uh, my goal is to get a similar days-like state where I can basically silently command a child to basically do whatever I want them to, such oh, as Jesus go God. deeper into the swamp. Uh, and you're doing that to Robin? Uh, whoever volunteers to let me cast magic on them. Oh, okay. To show them an alt... What? Okay, I've seen these guys bend magic before. I failed these two spells before. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure this is like some weird fuckery going on with telepathy, much like how Merrick had a literal te telepathic conversation with a man in a salt circle. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think Ricky would volunteer in that conversation if you asked him. So, sorry, I thought you were going to try and specifically target Robin, which is why I brought up he, he would convince Robin. But... If uh, well, you, you know. feel more comfortable, like, because if he goes and talks to Robin, then, you know, people are going to talk and it might be kind of like a public display. Yeah. So if you'd rather do this more quietly, Ricky. Yeah, I'll manipulate my family members, definitely. Sure. Before I manipulate townies. Okay. <laughs> Give me that so, cast a spell. Uh, yeah. Or, or did you have something else? He has two to cast. And two uh, to pass. Are I will take kidding? I'll take one cast one spell cast for both. Fuck. Well he's going I... along with it, so I got assistance, right? <laughs> I got a plus one? Um Yes, you can take a plus one. Okay, it's that's a nine. A nine. Okay. Uh well, they spell... go away, but I cast them. Okay. Damn, you're like forgetting all your spells. Uh yeah. Well, you know. That's fine. Serving their purpose. Uh, there you go. Okay. I mean, it's literally an hour to get them all back, so it's kind of whatever. The person uh, you touch while casting the spell counts as a friend until they take damage or you prove otherwise. <laughs> you for And you form a <laughs> telepathic bond. By touching them, you can have one telepathic bond at a time. All right. Yeah. Okay. So, I cast the magic, and... Then I'm like, okay, I'll talk to you later. Uh, oh, I thought you said you wanted to show me something with the magic. Okay. I'm going to. Okay. Have a wonderful day. I'm going to go help kids how to swing axes or whatever the hell they do. Okay. Uh, Sounds good. All right. We got a charm boy and he's telepath. Mm -hmm. uh, and over the night, uh, you know. I'm going to wait until he, like, goes to sleep, and I, an adult, don't need to sleep as often. Uh, see any adult ever, I guess, for proof of that. Uh, and I'm going to use my telepathy to send him images of home, and the empathic wave of, like, you want to go home, your family loves and misses you. <laughs> Super liminal messaging has been invented, y'all. Uh, clearly, I'm stealing it from whoever did this in the first place. Uh, until, you know, he, like, wakes up and, like, hears a nagging voice in his head, but, you know, he wakes up so he's in that delirium, and I'm, like, influencing him. Uh, and I want to see what he does. Uh, are you telling him to leave now, in the middle of the no. night, or...? You know, just trying like to con, he's trying to con him and suggest it. Okay, this is a this is a grift. Uh, Not yes. yet. Okay, it's a grift, but I'm showing him how to grift. So. Okay, in the morning he announces to the rest of the children, you know, all I've been thinking, I I took a night to sleep on it. I think I want to go home, and um, the other kids are like, what? Oh no, what are we gonna do without you? Like, we are we were counting on you, says Robin. What does Robin... Does Robin or any of the other, like, dreamer kids seem, like, actually upset by this? Like, angered? Oh, oh yeah, I mean, the, they're kids, so their emotional regulation is, is... Yeah, but there's, like, the disappointed anger, and then there's, like, 
how dare you betray our cause like you dumb fuck i'm going to kill you yeah now. there are a couple kids like that not that not to the extent like i'm gonna kill you but just like try laying the guilt on Shut really up, thick and <laughs> what nothing nothing <laughs> all right we're uh, we're having our own telepathic yeah. conversation. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so so this and this is in front of all of you so anyone is welcome to chime in but um for some strange reason to the rest of you um ricky announces that he would like to go home um he's been thinking about it he wants to go home other kids are like Oh shoot! Oh, oh my God! I didn't realize you were thinking about that. Oh my God! I ask him while everyone's like losing their minds and talking about. I'm like, what uh, caused you to think this way? Was it like a dream in your mind? Yeah, kind of. I just I had dreams about home and realized how much I missed it. I I just. I mean, I think this is... I, th I respect what each of you want. I just want something different now. And people are just either shocked or confused or upset. There's no, like, other people who are like, Oh, yeah, I totally want to go home, too. I'm so glad somebody finally said it. Um... There are some kids who are quiet. Okay. And... Yeah, they might be entertaining the same notions, but... So... God, I feel like a mastermind. Because uh, I know how easy it is to get people to, like, turn on each other. And if I can get these kids to, like, fracture up and on their own decide that home is the best and it's we cannot do this anymore, that would be, like, the ultimate, like, win in my book. Because then everybody survives and they all leave the swamp. Uh, but also, I want to end the spell of Charm Person and Telepathy. Uh-huh. But I want to do it not in public. Okay. Uh, so, like, when Ricky is going to his tent or whatever to pack up <laughs> is when I will strike. Unless someone, like, goes and approaches him to, like convince him to stay i'm trying to like out a spy basically right now of like no we totally need you ricky and they like try to make a personal appeal because that's suspect numero uno at that point um i don't i don't think there is anyone if what you're trying to do is see if other kids are under the influence of magic or manipulation like directly you're not going to get that i think what becomes apparent after talking with ricky is that there are some other kids that have been influenced but are not being actively like possessed or man or Control. actively manipulated um fuck all like, i have taught this man is to distrust strangers a little bit. and magic <laughs> which is actually a complete win in my book as well <laughs> you should distrust magic yeah so um, so I think I think your your trap serves its purpose in in seeing if there is anyone on like directly under the influence and it's apparent that there is not. Fuck. No spies. Uh kind of. But All you right. still suspect and maybe rightfully so that there has been some tampering cuz like why would all of these kids from multiple villages all yeah. decide to come to this place? Well, and, yeah, it makes perfect it. intuitive sense, which is why I'm so surprised no one else is, like, picking up on it. Yeah. Uh, so I wait for Ricky to head off to his lean-to or tent or whatever Basil's been constructing uh, and clap my hands, end the spells. Ricky snaps out of it. Uh, now, this charm person is not, like, a... 5e D and D, so they don't necessarily uh, you know they don't hate me immediately right uh but uh, what what occurs once they come out of their like charm like is it a immediate 
I've only failed the spell, so I don't, <laughs> I don't know what it actually does. Yeah, now we need to figure it out. Um, does he know he's been messed with? I mean, he or knows he's been he messed have... with. He he volunteered to be yeah. magicked, so... But is it like a day state where he can't remember anything, or is it like clear and crystals? I think it, beca- be. I think it, over time, he will realize... I don't think it's in this moment, but eventually he's going to realize, like, those dreams and thoughts he had while asleep were completely influenced. Like, or they, okay. or maybe he just realizes, like, oh, I was just thinking about going home, and maybe it was just my subconscious. Like, he he does not put that on you, though. Like, he does not, he does not realize right away that he was charmed. Okay. I ask him how he feels, just... Oh, I guilty. uh, Shoot. I realized I just told everyone I wanted to go home, but now I'm feeling really guilty and uncertain. I mean, look what look what we've been able to accomplish over the last couple days, like with you all here helping six tents and like a, a watch post. Super. Yeah. Super cool. Yeah. So. I'm going to go talk to Robin and try and save some face because I don't know. I don't know what I want right now. Maybe I need another night to sleep on it. Okay. Um, Do you remember yeah. the conversation we had last night? Before you oh, like cast telepathy on me? Yeah. Yeah. I just stare at him meaningfully. He gets real awkward about it, like, what are you looking at me for? Uh, and then he'll go talk to Robin. And unless there's anything else you want, John, and we've, we've spent a lot of time on this no. scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're fine. Um, so. Um, Fucking hell. This has got more complicated. Yeah. So, in terms of Lynn, which is the name of the girl that you all recovered um, at the mm. sand, the Black Sand site, um, throughout the last couple days, she has eventually opened up. Um, she shares that her name is Lynn. She's from a neighboring village to the west. Um, and her entire village was attacked by, uh, by Valors. Um, and she, um, was one of the sole survivors of the attack. She and another individual, a woman, uh, who was a sorceress. Um, the Veilers eventually caught up to them and found them here in the swamp, and the sorceress defended them both. Uh, she outmatched and outnumbered attempted to use some extremely powerful magic and ended blowing herself up along with all of the veilers um and this is weighing very heavily on her and she doesn't know how to process it but she is the only surviving individual from her village I think we should check and just see, like, uh, do you want to stay here in the land of the lost with these other kids, or do you want to come back to our village with us? They're on a different path. You can stay with them. It's your choice. She doesn't know how to answer. Okay. It's time. So... Um, big picture, what is the plan on what to do about the kids? It sounds like some of you believe you should allow them to remain and assert their independence and develop their own way of life here. Uh, Wick, it sounds like does not. Well... Or... If there's any alignment that would make me <laughs> want to get these kids out of here, it is a good alignment. Mm-hmm. I'm not walking away from this one. Okay. Um, right. These are 20 experience points. If I protect each and every one of them. <laughs> <laughs> <Not> John. <laughs> mm. 
Uh, no, I... No. But... I, I, think, I think if we teach them how to defend themselves, then maybe the thing that you saw in your horrible vision won't... They can Come cast to fireball on children. This is I, I, I don't they have one hit point. One hundred percent. We have to defend these kids or get them to leave. I I agree that that they have to be encouraged to leave. But if you keep trying to manipulate them into leaving, they'll just resist because they're kids. They have to pick it for themselves. Not if I so succeed like... twenty rolls in a row. Okay. okay. <laughs> you do that, John. <laughs> Holy John. Shit. John, can you succeed two back. rolls in a if row? We... <laughs> if we so oh, no, I cannot. chaos, it's not going to work. We need to to be supportive, and they need to pick their own journey. So what I happens? I think, beg listen, you, what happens when an actual attack happens? We'll then be they here. get scared, and they'll want to come home. I exactly. think. I think, given how late it is and how we are at the end of our time, maybe this would be a great conversation to have in character at the start of our next session. What do you want? I like, like okay. Yep, I'm down. Yeah. Okay. Sure. All right. Well, with that, I think this is a good place to wrap uh, our episode today. Okay. We will come back and resolve um, the lost children uh, in the sunken mire next time on Fable Table: Song of the Ravenlands. Um, do any of you have any shout outs or or anything to say before we depart for tonight? I do. <laughs> Yeah. Come see me tomorrow on Greg Hansen's stream, www.twitch.tv slash Greg Hansen, as I lead three wonderful, amazing people back home through the mist oh, yeah. to try to get back from our long journey into the ghost woods. Oh, as nice. I try to convince my party to actually fight something instead of running like scared children from every challenge. Wow. That we achieve. You need you need a cacophony. Every energy. single one. Who just goes okay. charging in just all full party. Die. Let's not fight it. And I'm like What is <laughs> going on? <laughs> Alright. It's alright. No, good. We're gonna all get right. it back. That's uh that's Come Friday night. Jim. No, Thursday night. Thursday night, tomorrow. 7 p.m. Excellent. 7 p.m. ish Pacific. 10 p.m. Eastern. Uh, and if you love that, yes. you can check out on Sunday, the 20th, February 20th, at 2.30 p.m. Pacific. John and I will be on Greg Hansen's stream doing a... Hell, I don't thing. even know what we're doing. I don't know what we're you doing. You guys it's in, doing something. It's, and it it's in awesome. Charlie's court. All I, all I know is I've rolled three characters on Greg's channel, and I've rolled three terrible stat blocks. Horrible. They're <laughs> awful. It's going to be a blast. Should uh, be exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Um, I can't wait to see how you're going to get this one killed. <laughs> <laughs> last one was a doozy, so you know who knows. The last one, the last one saved my ass because I would have done exactly what you did after you got yourself suicided. So it was great. Oh yeah, well I was hey, playing problem. a paladin, Thank so you. I was in it, yeah. in it to win it, no matter what. Mm -hmm. What's a uh, paladin? All right. What's okay. A... <laughs> Any other shout outs before we depart? I am doing games from today till Monday. Ooh. Uh, so come watch me at John Dungeon Master at Twitch TV. J O N, not J O H N. You might be confused. Uh, there is there a J O H N dungeon master? I, if there is, I'm about to make a new account. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> ought to get that IP on lock. Nice. All right. Yeah. All right. Nice. Anything else? Well, no, just thanks for the game. Thank you all. Uh, we have been Fable Table. If you like the content, make sure to subscribe on YouTube or follow us or even subscribe on the uh, disc, uh, mm, the Twitch account. Uh, we have some awesome emotes if you subscribe uh, or if you subscribe on Patreon, you can choose any level, uh, even just a buck a month if you like. We really, really appreciate the support. Uh, we hope you have a wonderful evening and rest of your day. Um, and we will see you next time on Fable Table. Have a good night, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Good night. Bye.